Welcome, everybody, to the H3 Podcast with a very, very special guest. In town for VidCon is your boy, Boogie. Well, I'll be honest with you. I am actually here for this podcast. VidCon's like the <laughs> thing Yeah. I'm doing. Now, I'll be honest with you. When uh, we were playing at VidCon this year, you you mentioned the podcast from like six months ago and said you want to be on it. And yeah. like the yeah. next time I'm in LA, but that's the entire thing I thought the whole time. And I was afraid to approach you. I was like, I'm, I'm going to DM and just demand to be on it. But I'm like, well, I know he's busy. Oh. And I was like, you got SoFlo this Friday, isn't it? Steve O this Friday, Steve-o. SoFlo next Friday. Right. So you got like a pack schedule anyway. <laughs> and then we could fit you in uh, well, anytime. I'm, well, not a lot of people can. I'm a big guy. Guy. I don't know if your <laughs> listeners know that, but I happen to be a little extra wide. We got all the space you need, buddy. Yep. Well, it's, for me, it's like I know you don't you don't get the opportunity to come out to L.A. free for you. Although you have been traveling more. Well, lately. we've been trying to, but this body yeah. does not like it very much anymore. <laughs> it started to, you know, it, it's been a downhill battle. I'd like to say uphill battle, but it's been a downhill battle over the last couple of years uh, with diabetes getting worse, blood pressure getting worse, and everything else. So uh, it's, it's difficult to even really leave the house anymore. This busted out back, these busted knees and stuff like that. Wow. Um, but we push it to its absolute limits, and we try to come out to L.A. at least twice a year, mm. for, at least for the Game Awards and at least for VidCon. I think, now I'm, I don't know if your listeners know this, but I'm scheduled for uh, gastric bypass on July yes. 25th. Yeah. I, and it was a three-year process to qualify. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, so we had to lose a ton of weight wow. uh, to get down to an ideal how weight. Much, how much? So when what? you... Decided that you wanted the ga- the gastric bypass surgery. Yeah, how much weight did you need to lose since then? Like, well, the, okay. Well, the very when I knew that I was going, when I like finally came to terms with the fact that I would knew, need gastric bypass, I that was 13 years ago. Wow. Oh um, shit. But so then, this... like financially, I couldn't afford it to begin with. How much is it? Um, well, I mean, and when it, 13 years ago, you're talking yeah, you, we... fifty, sixty thousand dollars, you know. <laughs> Right, and that's just like absurd, and I couldn't get insurance, and I, I, the only work I could get was part time, and generally that's through like nepotism through friends and stuff. Yeah. So then people don't want to put me on their health insurance. That's crazy, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I knew that was the first step, and to finally get enough money in the bank to be able to to, to pay for it. So uh, the doctor I'm working with, if you're living in the Northwest Arkansas region, Doctor Perner is an amazing doctor. Shout out. Um, he managed to cut me a really nice deal. It's right under twenty thousand. And it's all out of pocket, you know. But do you have health insurance? I do. I, I we bought the best possible package Arkansas offers, hmm. but they they don't want to pay for that surgery. They consider it to be a cosmetic surgery, really? which sounds yeah. like lunacy to me because it I will guess. save them millions. Like, you know, if they were doing that surgery, pay eighteen thousand hmm. dollars to keep me from having a stroke or a heart attack. Yeah. And like, how much is that going to cost you? Well, like, pff, right. But it, you know, but politics aside, mm-hmm. uh, then I, but I, at my biggest, I was six hundred pounds. I was just right under 600 pounds, and then I've lo- I've got down to 500, and then went back up to 560, and then back down to 500, and then back up to 550, mm-hmm. and then back down to 500, and, yeah. and I, I managed to trend downwards on like average, mm-hmm. but it's a, that yo-yo thing. A lot of people my size tend to do that. Um, just like with the with how life, what life throws at you, sometimes right. you just. I mean, I know that feeling on a micro level. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Like I yeah. tried. I have. I have a little bit of like a fat guy disease, I always think, because like Ela doesn't care about food, right. but I get it in my mind. Like when I just I need a fucking cheeseburger or I need to eat some shit and I don't have that self-control. Like Ela doesn't care about food. But for me, it's it is kind of I guess it's kind of therapeutic. I will tell you now, I this is this one I want to confront you with right away. <laughs> You've called yourself the Fupa King of YouTube. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Let me tell you something. You ain't got nothing on me. Listen, I haven't You're seen Fupa God. I haven't seen my dick in so long, Ethan, <laughs> that I could have it declared legally dead. Do you understand? Okay, listen to me. I was taking a piss the other day. And which is, by the way, all guesswork. I'm sorry for what I did to your bathroom before the show, but listen, I uh, I heard a clink of glass hitting porcelain. And I'm like, what? Did I just pass a kidney stone? Took a step back, looked in the toilet. There's a tiny little bottle. Scooped it out. Inside the tiny little bottle was a tiny little note. And the note said, Dear Steve, please send pussy. Sincerely, your prick. So I know he's out there. <laughs> this is an SOS. <laughs> right, right. He's like, please, somebody send help. That's fucking hilarious. Sorry. I'm not at that level yet, but I'm not that many cheeseburgers away from never seeing my dick again, too. I, I don't know. I, I see now I'm self-conscious of other people's weight, so I watched you... You've been slimming down a little bit, man. Yeah. But it's and like it's you were saying. Good. It's looking good. Well, you're here, looking good. It's like you were saying. I lost like 25 pounds right. in a month, and then I got sick, and I just like lost all fucking – I was just like, I'm sick. 
I didn't eat for a week. Fuck this. And then that was like a month ago. And I've been yeah. putting on weight since I probably gained like five pounds back. Right. And that's like, that's but what, that's, yeah, that's, that's what everybody does, right? And that's the biggest problem. Once, once you get big, it's so hard to not be big. Yeah. And like you'll see people who hit these record weight losses. I have a friend whose name I'm never supposed to mention, but he was on a television show, Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition, right? Mm, yeah. And uh, he. Uh, it ended up on the show and he ended up losing a dramatic amount of mm. weight like record hundreds? amounts of weight hundreds hundreds um, putting I think one of the most record losses just period ever really? in a year and of course wow. like every other contestant that you read about on Biggest Loser every other contestant he gets home and puts half that weight back on oh, yeah. or in some cases people put all of that weight back on or oh. even some cases they put another 100 or 200 and like that's I, one of the reasons I and getting the surgeries because I want to be an advocate for it. Mm -hmm. Because I, for a lot of people, if somebody's like, what, 50 pounds overweight like you are, mm -hmm. maybe 75 pounds overweight. Jesus, no. When somebody's like that, that's that big? Are you not, how, how overweight <laughs> are you? I'd say probably like, I'm just kidding. I'm just it's saying, I don't that. know. But I would imagine you're probably uh, your biggest 50 pounds over your ideal weight. I I'm probably about 30. Okay, well, there you God go. God right? damn, dog. What well, I don't know, fuck? man. I'm just the kidding. camera I'm totally adds, just kidding. Yeah, I'm totally... I'll tell you, this is something I don't think anybody will realize until you, you get here. I did not realize exactly how tiny <laughs> you guys actually are. You're tiny. Now that's obviously well, is tiny. consider the source. Yeah. Right. But I'm always amazed when I see somebody. I from feel YouTube. like a monster. No, but just I, for the record, we hear it a lot about Ethan because he always exaggerates yeah. when he's on. Yeah. While you so he's that stance, it's that one stance. Yeah. yeah the, foot back, foot forward is yeah. so good. I mean, the it's one so good. The one thing I consistently hear when I meet people for the first time is one, you're skinnier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is that I think you're, I, don't, I think that's it. I that's, think that's all. It. That's it. But that's you're sexy fat. You're and sexy you're, fat. you're not as funny as I thought. <laughs> no. <laughs> people, just, people constantly stop me after hanging out with me for 10 minutes and say, you're really not as funny as I thought. I never thought you were funny, man. That's good. <laughs> yeah, so don't worry about that. I want, more, I, I want more fans way, like that. You should uh, do a proper introduction. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, well, well, okay. we just what's got, up, uh, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, right? Buggy to 988 <laughs> coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. Tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about my friends, Ethan and Eli Klein. <laughs> Whose show is this? <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking over. I'm taking over. <laughs> wait, so, what's yeah. your first, hold on, wait. So, hey, guys, what's go. up? <laughs> it's me, Francis, and this is actually my real voice. The Buggy <laughs> character <laughs> is your character. No, do your introduction. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> do a proper introduction. Uh, well, I mean, you need no uh, intro. Yeah. Boogie2988, yeah. he's a legend of YouTube. He's been around forever. He's he's a fucking legend. And I think everybody, you know, your reputation exceeds you. Exceeds. Proceeds. Proceeds. Exceeds. Proceeds. <laughs> probably exceeds me, honestly. Proceeds. <laughs> probably proceeds. Yeah. I don't know. One of the seeds. It's seeding something. And then, of course, Eli Klein. If in case that you don't know him, check out his channel. <laughs> Boogie yeah, of course. Two nine eight. No, he's a legend. I mean, oh, and I do Twitch too for the people watching on Twitch. Who don't know. Oh yeah, you I play do Overwatch Twitch five nights a week. And I will tell you, let me let's talk about something. By the way, mm -hmm. I'm glad to see you finally coming over to Twitch. But mm. where were you four years ago when I was telling everybody the apocalypse is coming? Chief, four really? Diversify, you diversify were? where your four where years your ago content is we going. weren't really on YouTube to be honest. Uh, oh, that's I guess that's true. Has we it been we, that short of a time? We've been we were making like a hundred dollars a month on YouTube four years ago. Yeah, like four years ago, we were uploading some, but we weren't like doing YouTube, you know what oh, I mean? Dude, right do you want to see what we were uploading four years ago? I, it, I swear I've seen it. It <laughs> was like, it was my art projects, basically. <laughs> Let me show you what we were if doing four years ago. Well, it's that. funny because like I was saying, I, I think I've been following you now, I guess, the majority of your career. Shit. Shit. Sorry. Shit. Shit. That was so embarrassing. I'm sorry. But like I said, I think I've been following you guys since I saw you on Reddit the first time. And I don't know if it was your first time on like slash r slash videos, but I mean, I, we, we binge watch everything. We have my friends over Saturday <laughs> night and uh, we tend to binge watch YouTube a little bit. Um, and you know, you know, Eric from Comet uh, Etiquette, like guy. one of our top oh, yeah. of the list, a bit of yeah. Jack's films back when he's doing the, the grammar. Yeah. Your grammar sucks. And then we, somebody, uh, I'm like, well, let's check out, let's check out these guys. That's and I mean, so we watched awesome. you guys oh, yeah. for four straight hours <laughs> That's and so every sick. Saturday night. That, that we just kept coming back until we watched your entire That's catalog. Dude. And we've followed you ever since. It must it's be, crazy. isn't it crazy when you hear that? I mean, it must be the same for you. When you hear that people actually sit at home and watch your videos. What's insane to it's me. It's pretty wild. It's so What's insane to me is wild. that 
actual like that you guys even know who I am or what are you talking about? Oh, I'm just saying. I have a good story for you. Okay, I have to hear. <laughs> but I'm saying like when you, you, you create on YouTube, and I live in Arkansas, right? I don't, I don't have the New York connection. I have the LA collect connection, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm a recluse. I've always been a recluse. I spent seven years as a shut-in once, man. I don't generally like people very much, and my wife really brought me out of that shell completely. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've always been good with people, but that was just like, to, I was good at getting away from people, like keeping mm -hmm. people at arm's length. And so I create in this like vacuum, right? Mm -hmm. And you get all that negative stuff. I get a lot of negative stuff um, because of my size, because of my mm -hmm. opinion sometimes. A lot of the Xbox kids hate me because I like PlayStation or vice versa, you know? <laughs> and That's um, the real hate. That stuff like, gets in your head, you know? Oh, yeah. And no, I have an I anxiety too, disorder, man. so it, it, it exacerbates, yeah. and I, I go crazy. And then I come to something like VidCon, and then I get to meet creators like you, who I'm watching every day, and I respect. Like you can't imagine. Like uh, last year, I had dinner with Bernie Burns, and I've been watching Bernie Burns since yeah, I met Red him versus recently. Blue in 1998 really, or whatever. Really right? cool guy. Like we were streaming Red versus Blue in 240p, wa walking around quoting that mm -hmm. in the late <laughs> 90s, I guess, or maybe early 2000s. And it's, it's insane when the people that you love and respect and watch every day love and respect you. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that. To be in this room is just mind-boggling to me. <laughs> well, insane. let me put it in perspective for you, okay? <clears throat> Because when one of the, f uh, it's almost embarrassing, or it's not really embarrassing, but it just gives you some idea of like where everyone starts. We were we started in Israel, um, and it's also just such an awesome thing about YouTube is that you can do it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the reason that I really went after YouTube. I was watching Jimmy Kimmel, and he was saying some shit about how if you make good stuff in this day and age, because traditionally it was like you had to know somebody. You had to have somewhere to send your shit. You had to suck somebody's mm -hmm. dick. Yep. He's like, these days with YouTube, if you make good stuff and just put it on the internet, people will watch it. Yep. And I was like, damn, that's that's really, that struck me. So mm -hmm. I decided I want to do YouTube because I didn't have any connections or anything, but I knew I want to be in entertainment. Anyway. I love your early work, by the way. The earlier joke, <laughs> the earlier goose weird. and gas is so weird, man. It's, <laughs> it's, it, really it's weird. very different. I loved watching. I love watching you grow into yourself, but it, really, this is the Shell. this is the story, Shell. right? Yeah, to be the ages, the right? Like, it's, it's, it's insane to watch you become. You know, I did, I thought for sure yours would be like over in the corner when I walked in here today, and she walked right up, gave me a hug. I'm like, oh my god, I'm hugging you. <laughs> it's it, it's amazing having watched you just because uh, I, I mean you were so uncomfortable in the front of the camera. And I oh, could yeah. tell he yeah. was making you do it, and yeah. I'm like, should I call like spousal services to make sure she's not like a couple being of times forced came to close. do this right? See now she's happy. <laughs> no, this is for your you. own good. Yeah. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> no, I, well, we, we do love you. I, I think I speak for everybody when we say that. Well, Ela, people don't care about me anymore. It's all about no, the Ela Kleiner. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm like, do I even need now. to be here? Yeah. <laughs> Ela Kleiner for no, life. But yeah, I was saying, I think before we like officially started the, the stream, I was telling you that it's it's daily for me. Like I'm still, yeah. I still, I can't even watch myself. It's really hard to. By the way, me too. I have anxiety. Yeah, yeah. I have fucking a lot of trouble sometimes. Like it's not, you know. There yeah, are just everyone a room has... full of neurotic people. Yeah. Right now. This is yeah. awesome. <laughs> everyone's, but I feel like everyone's neurotic to a certain extent. It's just, some, I feel like I'm pretty neurotic to be I, honest. I will say, because of the nature of what I talk about on YouTube, and for the people who are listening to know me know me very well, I do like a bunch of stupid comedy stuff with the Francis character, and I talk about video games a lot. But every once in a while, I dip down into the personal stuff. And, mm. You know, there's a period of time in life where I was suicidal, so mm -hmm. I, I talked about that on YouTube, and uh, I get a ton of letters because of that. Huh. People, you know, I have some really good stories and some really bad stories. Uh, you know, I won't bore you with too many of them, but... Uh, then I talk about, you know, what it's like to be a big guy. And there's a lot of big people out there right now struggling with their weight. By the way, I'm not a health at any size, or I think that's one of the mm -hmm. biggest bullshit scams in the world. You can be healthy at any size for a little while, but that eventually does catch up. That bill becomes <laughs> due, by the way, kids. Yeah. Um, you know, and when I got on YouTube, I wanted to serve, as, at the very least, as a bad example. Mm. Hey, don't do what I did, people, because I am miserable. That's mm -hmm. my original plan. Um, but <clears throat> when it comes to the anxiety, I lost track. <laughs> <laughs> what the point I was going to make there? Oh. Um, <laughs> we were talking about we're all neurotic, right? With you there, yeah. so yeah. the number of YouTubers who will open up to me mm -hmm. when I get that five minutes with us at VidCon, and obviously I'm not going to betray anybody's trust. Yeah, but yeah. Like they'll say, "Oh, I mean, I saw that video and it hit me because I've had suicidal tendencies, or I've had." Dude, I've been there, kind of. I've had anxiety, right? I'll it, talk about it. I'll, I want to talk about it. I think it's interesting so people know that we're all humans. Right. You know? yeah. Yeah. I will tell you, I genuinely believe 
genuinely believe that there's not a YouTuber in the world that publishes a video and goes, I'm very satisfied with that. <laughs> maybe once. Exist, I think right? it happened maybe once or twice think, in the history I of our think, catalog. Yeah, I think yeah. it doesn't exist. Like, like Usually it's like, no it's like thing. fuck. Usually when we post a video, it's like, fuck this. I can't work on this any longer. I need this out of my life. I need this out of my life right yeah. now. I've been, like, yeah. I, I created my account in 2006 and I started making videos at the end of 2008-ish. Right, uh, I started making videos it, yeah. about 2008-ish. And then around 2010 is where I started taking it serious. I met, a, mm. met, my, met my wife, or met the girl mm. who's gonna become my wife. Mm. And I'm like, man, I need to like, not just screw around on this thing. I need to see if I can make something of it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I've never been satisfied with my work. I mm. never like anything I've ever done. Every time I put it out into the world, I'm like, this is it. I've ruined everything. That <laughs> video will I end feel. the career. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my wife, God <laughs> love her, so funny. she has to endure this once every three months because I, I mean you know you you know now uh I, of course you've had a meteoric rise so certainly you probably don't know i watch your youtube stats go boom like it's just a we have like plateaus and and strikes right. strikes and gutters well i've always had that up yeah. down Dude, i up, checked your down, social right? blade i cannot fucking believe how like you've chugged along because you hit four million yeah. subscribers yeah. and that's over the course of like seven years of yep. just like steady grinding right mm -hmm. that is that's what well, super respectable dude well I, mean, I have a history in web design and search engine optimization mm -hmm. so every once in a while the algorithm will have a new problem with my channel <laughs> um they'll have a problem with the, the way that yeah. i'm uploading the frequency mm -hmm. that i'm uploading or the topics that i'm talking about and i have to completely reinvent myself mm -hmm. and but i'm pretty good at, at figuring out an algorithm and pretty good at figuring out what they need to deliver my videos still isn't that fucked up about youtube that you're not like hey do people like my videos no, it's, not it's all about like Does is youtube trying to kill my like channel it? this week Does but, the algorithm like by my the way videos? and just people I, i'm afraid when I talk about the algorithm killing my channel, people are gonna think I'm like a whiny conspiracy theorist. This shit is realer. It's real. Oh, it's so real. So real. Yeah. And the worst part about it is when you talk to a Google engineer every once in a while, and I, I have several things. You know, I got hacked at VidCon last year. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so I, I got to really get to know the Google engineer team. Yeah. The one engineer by the name of Jeff, if you're listening, hi. Uh, he took his day off at VidCon to sat down with me for four and a half hours to restore as much as he could and it still took Fucking two weeks nightmare. to get everything back together to where I could re-upload and everything uh, but that you know during that process we talked about all kinds of stuff and uh, then I talked to some of the other YouTubers that are connected as well and obviously won't portray any names or anything like yeah. that name yeah. drop but yeah. uh, they, they, they'll talk about the algorithm and the guys That's over scary. at YouTube they know right but the way Google seems to operate, based on what I've heard secondhand, or the way YouTube seems to operate, is the same way that Google operates. <clears throat> there's not a lot of, of, there's not just one boss. Mm -hmm. And everybody kind of works in these little pods. And so my friend Jeff worked for the notification team. And I'm like, well, who's your boss? He's kind of like, well, kind of, I don't know. It's like squirrely about that. Yeah, yeah. And they, so, know, they don't talk about the inner workings at all. They're right. super yeah. secretive. And like, so, every time I've spoken to a Google employee, it, they'll be like, you can't ever say this publicly. This is right. strictly confidential. Yep. And then they'll say something that's not even interesting. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. Tell right. me the good shit. <laughs> yeah. but, it, but it appears that they, it's just like one hand never knows what the other hand is doing. Mm -hmm. and so that's yeah. entirely possible, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's like we, we all break off in our own little pods. And like someone came up with the idea of the notification idea. That wasn't like handed down from Susan or something. That's just somebody came up with. And right. so they went and built it, then showed it to their boss. And that boss is like, well, install it on the website. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so since they're just pushing out new code in different times and different places, even they don't really know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And they know that we get tore up, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, but they also know the resilient ones will find a way. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Well, it's yeah. all about money. I mean, that's not exactly true, I think, of what I've understood. But the thing is that I learned from talking to the engineers, I don't think this is confidential. It's not. But it's all like machine learning. So a lot of times what I learned, which the actually algorithm. shocked me, is that they don't even know what's happening. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the algorithm is machine learning, and it's constantly tweaking itself yep. mm -hmm. there's no yeah. longer the engineers aren't even involved at this point they just like check up on it periodically to try to understand what it's doing right yeah. but i think a lot of people there actually don't even understand what's happening which is such a shame because when google was brand new and i was doing that web design i started out doing um just like silly fan pages on like angel fire and i know nobody knows what that is oh, except the guy angel who ran it <laughs> geo cities you remember Fuck, yeah and uh eventually i discovered <laughs> 
like I was I, I started designing for clients with just basic HTML and then eventually like they opened that up to India and there's so many skilled coders in India mm -hmm. they were more skilled than me they were work, willing to work yeah. for a fraction of the price yeah. so I couldn't compete so I yeah. worked on search engine optimization and I realized that all these little stupid pages that I created I could figure out which ones are getting to the top of Google searches, mm. then sell that information. Mm. And they would only update the algorithm every three months. Mm. So I'd crack it two weeks in to push it out to my clients, and they'd all pitch back a thousand bucks for the information. This was pre YouTube. This is, right. This, is, what, what was this, this was 10 the black, years pre YouTube. Black hat CEO. We're talking 97, 98, oh, yeah. right? Wow. <laughs> uh, but then they started like rotating algorithms. And so you never knew what was going to be active that day. Mm. So I could sell you the key to one algorithm, but it didn't mean anything. You get a fraction what of the views from it. What does that mean, sell the key to algorithm so basically it would weight different things at different times so today we're looking at um, this parameter or that parameter today we're looking for these particular keywords and higher or we're parsing th this particular part of the language differently or we're looking for words and headers or we're looking for words in bold or we're looking for bolds and tables okay. now we're looking at tables and so you could figure out what specifically Google was higher ranking at that period mm. of time. But how did you okay. make money? Like uh, You just Bites. find somebody who wanted that information who's Selling currently designing. Oh, you were just right. giving information. So you weren't like middle selling right? links on like, yourself. Right. So, so you like, know like something's going to be trending tomorrow, right? right? So you buy that Or more specifically, the way that you would ah. format the web page is specifically what I would be selling. And so mm -hmm. I would figure out very quickly that all of the pages that I had that had tables built in, uh, or uh, th that one was performing well while uh, the pages that had frames built in, so th that was not mm -hmm. performing. And so I could push out to those people. So back right? then it was even more like web page that optimization. Exactly, yeah. right. And so it translates a little bit to YouTube. Um, oh, yeah. But same not, people, same yeah. algorithm. Well, I'm no Matt Pat from Game Theorist. That guy is, I don't know, he is insane when it comes to like the YouTube algorithm and stuff really? like that. I just it, I went to a small convention. Uh, I go to it every year called Retropalooza. It's in Texas, and I mean it's real small. It's the Game Chasers. I know nobody probably knows them that well, but they're just a great group of people and they're just fun to play a party with. So mm -hmm. I go down to it, and one year they got Matt Pat from mm -hmm. the Game Theorist to come, which is like a super weird. Number one, I normally headline that thing, so I was mad Matt was there. Uh, <laughs> but secondly, uh, this young lady in the audience, she says. I'm having some trouble on YouTube trying to get my stuff seen, and I don't really know what I'm doing wrong. And so, can you help me with that? And I'm thinking she wants that normal inspirational answer, like, mm -hmm. you know, be consistent <laughs> yeah. and, and and stay true to yourself. Fine, come on, make content, right? People, yeah, right. Yeah. Make content that people will engage with. Yeah. Try to figure out what your viral is going to be yeah. and do what. You know, but that's not Matt. That's not Matt. Matt is like, all right, so do you have a pen and paper? Let's start talking about the header. All right, so in, in the title of the video, you need to include at least six to eight keywords. Now, in the description section. I don't now, believe in that shit anymore. Can we talk about the tags? All right, now here's the thing. Nobody realizes this yet, but the algorithm now looks at your thumbnails. And I'm like, what? Oh, this must have been a while ago. It was 30 yeah. minutes, 30 of minutes the best shit of ever. him just reading her the Google you playbook like I, he's actually a really nice guy. I guess say, you know what he reminds me of. Ethan is also like that, so it would be funny I'm to see autistic them like when it comes to that. <laughs> I'm obsessed like, with it. Ethan versus Matt. The thing is, <laughs> okay, I have, pff, dude, I've been trying to understand that shit for a long time. I think we've come to the point though where thumbnail title definitely matters, but not in terms of of getting suggested. All mm -hmm. that matters is, hey, are you going to get monetized? Right. Yeah. Um, right. The algorithm is now just basically a game of can this video roll ads or not. Yep. The search, this, the suggestions is a total shit show. Like, it's just based on, I think, like your click through rate, which that information is not available to us. Nope. And it's uh, and impressions. I mean, like, how as a search engine optimization guy, I, I, I'm a bit we're born like a lot of your audience right now. Let, but, no, <laughs> but as I think a search engine optimization yeah. guy, Impressions. <laughs> how many people saw the page? How many people saw the theme note? Thumbnail. How many people so offered I'm, the link? If yeah. I don't have that information, I can't figure out the click through rate. Mm -hmm. I can't well, figure out how you, people yeah. engage. And and they won't tell me how many times that's people. That's why they don't tell you because that's the real yeah. right. missing piece to, to the equation. Click through rate is probably the single most important um, factor. And, you know, they don't tell you that because they don't want you clickbaiting. But it's like people right. are going to fucking exactly. clickbait. It's kind of. And so basically. If you've got a uh, a video on the sidebar, and it's getting clicked more, they they do a test on every video, right? Mm -hmm. This is my theory. I don't know this. 
So they'll show you for like a thousand views, and if people, nobody clicks it, then you don't you, you go away. Right. And there's like new rounds. I feel like every like ten thousand views, depending on how many views you're getting. So we'll reassess your video every ten thousand views and see what's the click through rate on the sidebar on this suggested. Right. If it, and it just keeps going and keeps going, and then that's how you get some videos with like fifty million views just from being spam. You ever been suggested a video so much it like follows you mm -hmm. everywhere? There was a yeah. video YouTube's that like bagging unanimously you to watch it. was on every video I created for a year. <laughs> and it was wow. a yo it had like ninety three million views. Yep. Yeah. And it was a one minute long video of an eight year old child swimming underwater. <laughs> <laughs> and it was every video I created <laughs> That got recommended. Number one and suggested. I, I know why. It's because my number one most viewed video yeah, is me falling in backwards pool. into yes. a pool. Yeah. And so they're like, that must be what they want. And I, 98 million so people it, clicked on it. It must have the most insane click-through rate. For right. whatever reason, people are clicking right, yeah. the shit out of that. Otherwise, right. YouTube wouldn't show it. So it's on one hand, it's all about that click-through rate. And then the, the other, like, it used to be tags. It used to be description. That shit doesn't matter at all. Tags is just, a, they're just a dupe to... Tags, yeah, you. that's it. T Casey Neistat, right. Casey right. Neistat doesn't use tags. Really, he doesn't use any tags, and he hasn't for years. And that guy's in trending every other day. That's <laughs> a whole other conspiracy, by the way. <laughs> but like, so they don't use tags. Is literally just entrapment. Well, I've thought that it uh, it can serve as a positive thing in that, um, like, if I talk about a video game, I'll always include PlayStation Four, Xbox One, Xbox X, One X, Xbox One S, Nintendo Switch. Those keywords, yeah. because oh, I think the advertiser. Sorry, bots... one sec, Eli. You don't have a. Maybe you should get it because people are saying volume up. Okay, what? How's the volume out there, Carlos? Okay, so never mind. I'm okay. getting trolled. No worries. Okay, good. Uh, but I think that the the advertiser bot does look at that for choosing what ads will get displayed if. So you know, I really I dispute. That, I dispute. Do you think that's wrong? I think okay. right now all that know. matters is the title and the thumbnail. Probably. If you have Xbox in the title, that's probably 99%. That makes sense. I think tags are literally, because people stuff the fuck out of tags forever. They, I, I, I genuinely think they only ever think about that when you put stuff that negatively affects you. I think you're right. If you put tits or sex or fuck or some stupid ass shit, right. then they're like, oh, hey, how you doing? Thanks for the signal, right? Right. So at this point, it's like, it's like really intricate, weird machine learning things. But mostly it's just about en engagement slash I have rate. a certain amount of survival guilt because, uh, let's see, this time last year, I had gotten really frustrated with um, with the face of YouTube. And I knew, like, you were talking about, like, YouTube drama to mm -hmm. an extent, but not, like, like maybe, like, a Keemstar kind of level of thing. And Keem was doing it, but he's doing it in his Keemstar kind of way, which... I don't think it pills to everybody. I and I've always liked DeFranco's way of approaching stuff. Like DeFranco, I think, it kind of a man crush for me. He knows that now. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I love the way he's uh, very very neutral down the middle about a topic when he presents it and then delivers his opinion. And I thought nobody's doing that for YouTube drama. And I I thought, man, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be that guy. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of praise from people I really liked. Mm -hmm. But uh, I made a video about Toby Turner. Mm -hmm. And uh, that video did not set well with me, like to perpetrate what was going on with Toby. Mm. And I'm like, man, that's well, what really. Did, what, did, what was your angle? We well, it was just, just basically to it. talk about what DeFranco had said, right. to say what Toby had said in his own defense, mm -hmm. and, and then to just kind of just go down overview. the middle. Right. Just this is what DeFranco said. This is what Toby has said. This is what the rumor mill says. I don't really know. I, and then my personal opinion was I feel bad for the guy, you know, because it's easy to I get into a cycle like that. Yeah, I felt And, like, bad let's just all give him a little bit of love and let's see if we can help him figure it out. But it still didn't sit well with so me. So why didn't it sit well? Because I, I felt like, what if Toby saw that, right? Like, he didn't know who I am. I, I saw him at VidCon the year before, and he didn't know me from Adam. So, but I'm thinking, if, what if he saw that? And so? then I feel, I just, I couldn't, I don't know. Did you I, say? It seems like it was pretty positive. Right, but even then, I, the anxiety kind of got to me a little bit. And so the next video I made was about Matthew Santoro, who I've talked off to off and on for years. And it was Met when him. he got claimed for plagiarism, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I um, so I talked about, you know, the transformative nature of taking a list and, and making it into a, a video, which is very transformative, right? And even if it was using that base list almost verbatim in a court of law, that might very well stand up as transformative. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only real angle they would have when it comes to fair use would be attacking the the, the fact that it destroys the value of the original list. No, and I don't think it was ever at risk for being 
um, a copyright infringement. It was just like well, kind right. of like, oh man, right, you're just kind fucking of stolen shit. Tasteless. But that yeah, was tasteless. That, that's how Reddit took it for a little while. Is that, that that's ridiculous? This is like right. Yeah. And so I like, tried to dispute that it was not ever a fair use issue. Mm. Yeah, it's it was just kind of a, a moral thing issue, to do, yeah. right? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And that, yeah. so I made that video, and then. I'm like, man, me and Matt have talked off and on about some real private stuff. What if he sees that video? Dude, I, I remember you were talking about drama back in the yeah. day. Or not, you, not even drama, but topical issues. Right. And then there was a thing where you removed a bunch of the videos, right? Right. And so you were like, I'm going to stop. Time? So a friend, a, a mentor, I'll go, I mean, I'll go as far as, as a mentor, John Bain, uh, Total Biscuit, yeah. mm -hmm. messaged me on Skype one night. And he's just like, hey, man, are you doing okay? And it was after I made that video where I was talking about the anxiety that I was getting from those videos. And I'm like... I don't know, man. I don't feel so good about what I'm doing. He goes, well, here's the thing, man. If, if, if something happens in my life, are you going to make a video about it? What about Dodger? What about Jesse? You know, because we've talked about that. And, okay. You and know I'm, what? Like, it's... I'm like, you know. I, I, John, I'm... Ha okay, Total Biscuit has a weird thing about drama. Right. He's, he's the one person who's always consistently, like, he had this big conspiracy that everyone got blacklisted because of drama channels. And, like. Right, right. Which I don't, I think, don't know if I agree with that. I don't. But. But here's my take. Yeah. Well, well, actually, if you if you don't mind, um, it that was enough to where it pushed my anxiety off the edge, and I'm like, you know what? Hmm. I can make content that isn't this, mm -hmm. and you know what? I'm gonna feel a lot better about myself. I'm gonna feel a lot more comfortable with what I'm doing. Like, let's get back to the roots. Let's get back to the gaming. Let's get back to that stuff. We'll let the experts do that, right? And then when the apocalypse hits, my income drops twenty percent. Mm -hmm. I barely dropped. Right, is, was I, what like, you mean? Or the, dropped right, too? It dropped the the YouTube portion of my income dropped about 20 to 30 percent it's, its peak was about half what it normally be hmm. and it's right now about 60 or 70 percent what it was last year mm -hmm. and so i had like this survival wait it guilt. went down yeah, it went down mine dropped of course everybody's dropped right? no but wait i'm just yeah. trying to understand so when it first hit you dropped 20. i dropped like 20 then it and got all the way down to 50 it's... after about three weeks and now i'm back up to about 30 percent what i earned last year oh, no, okay, okay. Back up now. it was okay. like 70 percent of what it, i earned last year yeah. right um, and I, I, I might eventually be back to where I was, yeah. you know, with the algorithm continuing to learn and the content content around creating. But I keep thinking, man, like I dodged a bullet there by by deciding to clean up my I content. Think and so. I feel kind of bad about it. I don't think so. Yeah, you know, I don't think so. I don't think that's what happened at all. You don't? No. Well, good. Make me feel better about it and tell me. <laughs> Not at all. Tell me what do you think happened. <laughs> well, first of all, I feel like you're always trying to like find reasons to make yourself feel bad. I've been through that myself. Oh, no, that's me. That's, I don't like, that's me in a nutshell. I don't think right? that's, like, that's it's just It's not me. survivor's guilt. Yeah. It's just there's no – your your decision doesn't impact anybody. It's just – but I don't think that drama channels got affected one way or the other. I was talking to some people who made drama channels. They're making more money than ever right now. And our – RCPM, I think we got hit especially bad just because we have a lot of, like, edgier videos. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know, whatever that means on YouTube. Like, I mean, I you're, you, you're, why... you're pretty safe. You sit there and you talk. talk. Right. You sit and you talk. There's right. nothing. No, it's. I don't think what matters so much is what you're talking about. It's more about, like, um, subject matter. Like, the stuff that really gets you is talking about, like, terror events and shit like right, that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. That's the stuff they care about is, like... Making fun of feminists, shit like that. Right. Surprisingly, those videos have better CPM than any of our other ones. That seems. I mean, that seems reasonable. So, but like, that's one of the things that I've always I just, admired about you, right? Like, I've always, I've, I, my, <coughs> my YouTube subscriber list, I think, surprises people sometimes because I love Idubs, I love Filthy Frank and Max Mofo, and just like all the people that push the edge and grade, and like obviously you guys too. And I love the people that push the edge. The reason I've always preferred your content over everybody else's is that most of the time even when you're like direct tearing somebody apart most of the time you're still the butt of the joke mm -hmm. most of the time like i probably the video that i think exemplifies that more than anything i go back to the guy with the swords cutting through shoes <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff Steak in and the like you just like you impaled that guy <coughs> pun intended uh, you impaled that guy you ruined him he just followed me on twitter by the way like a what? week ago <laughs> they're in ventura <laughs> But in no the same way. in the same video, then there's you like flipping around in your front yard and yeah. dog turds and stuff. <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, right. you know, at the end of that video, you're not even really thinking about the guy anymore. Yeah. You're laughing at you. That's and really so that's cool. That's why I like. The way I really you appreciate take the that. heat mm -hmm. off of whoever you're focusing on, right? And when you do put heat on someone, it's always in, it's never hate. It's memes, right? Mm -hmm. Like when when Idubs goes after somebody, I mean, it is yeah, wow, <laughs> it's right? Brutal. I mean, it's like that's just straight up grade school level <laughs> bullying sometimes which i love sometimes as long as it's funny for you it's always it's always it's memes that's cool i you know? appreciate that you swing I'm, with memes and i love that i really appreciate yeah. it it's definitely something we try to sometimes we like 
I think that's the beauty of, of like creating. Everyone has their different right. personality, right. and so whatever they're making has something of their personality in it. Yep. And I feel like for the both of us, it's really hard to just feel like we just maybe we're mean to someone. We don't like that feeling. Right. So well, that's back in the day, like we always, I love, for example, Ian's content. I do. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love it, but yeah. I couldn't make it myself. Right. It's too. Right. <laughs> I feel like like the video he made about Tana. Oh yeah. I did contemplate. I'm like, man, did he go in too hard? Yeah. But, but that it's video such a was great, also a masterpiece. It's such a great video. It was like a masterpiece. But, at, but I guess that's that's his style. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he he brings it to that point where you're like, shit, did he go too far? <laughs> like my favorite show on television, I don't know if you've seen it, Nathan For You. I haven't seen it. Oh, my God. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. It's like the semi-reality <laughs> Um, he goes to businesses and he tries to help them, but he just makes everything worse. <laughs> but it's like a reality show. Uh, they don't know that he's like doing in a character. main character, but he pushes it so far this, sometimes yes. that you get really uncomfortable. Yeah, right? sometimes but you end up feeling genius. bad for the people. But that's my sense of humor. But that's exactly my sense of humor. It's genius. It's very uncomfortable. My roots are in like <laughs> Richard Pryor, Sam Kinison, Eddie Murphy, and like 80s Eddie Murphy. If you've never listened to 80s oh, yeah. Eddie His, Murphy, well, Delirious God. is one of my favorites. Right, but it's yeah. like today I have trouble listening to that. It made me feel uncomfortable in the 80s. Now it makes me want to like turn it off. I'm like, oh my God, you can't say those words. <laughs> Even Eddie Murphy can't say those words. You can't say that. Yeah. Right. Um, it's just insane, but that's that's always been my comedic style. So when I started on YouTube, that's what I wanted to do, right? Yeah. Like I wanted to be like Fat Boy, get well, down. Well, your old videos like are really good. Right. It's I'm, like the whole naked. Like I'm gonna get naked. The joke is I'm fat. <laughs> that's always gonna be the joke. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, but I, one day I just was in a depressed mood, sat down, turned on the camera, and just started talking to it, mm. and, and and then that was like therapy for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then people responded to that way more than they responded to mm -hmm. any like me eating meat weirdly or <laughs> I was, fruit I was salad or I was watching you know? recently some of your classic like the Mountain Dew taste test video. Oh, I love the video. You're like fucking oh my God. I was like, God, this is just hilarious shit. I, the part where you're like uh He's he's in the video of testing. There's like eight different flavors of Mountain Dew, and towards the end, you're like, "Oh yeah, this one tastes like diabetes. <laughs> I can feel my toes tingling. I like that." I was like, "Man, that is." Those wonderful. were always those were always like, just a riff off the cup, off the cuff, like not even. Reminded to me of the old. Happens. Reminds me of the old school videos we used to make, mm -hmm. just like the Wild yeah. West shit. Yeah. The yeah. shtick of those was always to be believable. I wanted mm. someone to think that's a real person that was the doing brilliant. something real. That was the brilliance of Francis. Right. And then eventually I hit this boiling point where everyone was into the joke, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I did that, I was like, well, now it's time to be a little more transformative with the character because no one's, I mean, everybody's heard of me now. If you, you know, even even the nuke faces of YouTube don't find it believable, like the young kids or whatever. Yeah. And I don't want, I don't want, Preteens watching my content anyway, right. you know. Uh, so I, I not with the number of times I swear in, in the Francis video. Mm -hmm. So I try to uh, I try to be transformative with it. And I think it still works. A lot of people prefer like the voice change dramatically because it used to be a very um, I don't even still do it, but it's a uh, hey guys what's up? It's me Francis and I. It's very low, and then I wanted to try to make it a little more cartoony. So it kind of. Hey guys, what's up? It's mm. me, Francis. You know, let, let, let me tell you something. I don't know, <laughs> and I I really prefer that way of doing it. And I have like some comedic inflection, inflection in it, and it sounds much more like a cartoon character. Mm. It's but it's less believable. Yeah. But still, to this day, like my E3 content, um, this year I really really wanted to do E3 right, and so all the Francis sketches for E3. I, I wrote as many jokes as I could, had my wife sitting down next to me writing jokes with me too, and tried to go very old school with it. And I got a brand new group of people in who then, the very first E3 video I uploaded with my regular voice, they're like, what the <laughs> fuck? What? And like, the people are mad. Still, they get mad. Because they, they like the idea that Francis is real. Oh, God, it was uh, so yeah. convincing. So That's I think funny. the first time I saw Francis' video, I thought it was real. <laughs> oh, you're making my day right now. No, but yeah. well, this was like back early days of right. YouTube. And that shit was like all over the place. The Francis Ray's videos were like, was yeah. such a character, was such a meme. I was like a beautiful part of <laughs> YouTube's history. It was the Francis Rage. Oh, <laughs> that's a golden oh. day. Oh, <laughs> but to go, I was I was about to tell a story. And I think you'd be flattered by. Yeah, it. it's interesting. It's kind of embarrassing for me, but regardless. So back in the day when we had like I don't know 500 subscribers, whatever. I remember you made a video. This is like. You were like, um, you made a video about how to 
grow your channel. Mm -hmm. And one of the tips was to like reach out to other YouTubers or something. Yeah. And so back in the day, I like sent you a message on YouTube. Oh God! <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, buggy, just want to say I'm a fan." And it's really one of these That's really so quintessential funny. cringy <laughs> messages. I didn't know about that. Oh. Yeah, I don't think you knew about it. But like, you get these messages all the time. I mean, right. people. I think big YouTubers get these all the time. Like these really quintessential cringy. Like, "Hey, I'm a fan. Check out my shit." So I sent you one of those. You're the only person I ever sent. I sent you one. Did I, did I respond? You gotta no. tell me. Okay. But it's complete, dude. Because I will tell you, to this day, I block out an hour, hour every day to respond to as many people as I this can. This was a YouTube Probably. direct message. Oh, those are hard to find. That's yeah. how long ago but, this was. But, <laughs> like, literally, because I respond, it becomes insurmountable. I can't. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what, like, we have a, we still have a P.O. box. Mm -hmm. um, but if I ever mention it in the video, yeah. it's, it's a it's a room full of yeah. mail. Yeah. You can't do it it's anymore, impossible. right? Like, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Um I but that's amazing. I can't believe you wrote me back in the day. It was like, I did it. I wrote it. I'm like, God, that was so stupid. I shouldn't do that ever again. It felt just really dumb. It's adorable. Though. But I was just, Aww. but you know, back then you do it. You fucking, you're out there. And grinding. now we're best friends. From now look, I mean, right. it is kind of surreal though. Yeah. That I went from writing you that cringy ass. Yeah. Hey, check out my videos. <laughs> right, but that's the thing. Like, you know what? I probably have it on my computer. I think that's the only DM I've ever sent I, on YouTube. I want to see it what? so bad. I got to kind of pull that up. <laughs> but here's the thing. <laughs> like, the next PewDiePie. Oh, I'm probably better than PewDiePie. No offense, Felix. But the next PewDiePie, the next number one YouTuber, could very well be in the audience right now, right? They could be yeah. very well chugging along. And I think it's still possible. <sighs> I know what you're about to say. I think it is still possible if you get the fundamentals right. Oh, I yeah. No, that, I agree. Like, Dude, look at off, Logan and Jake Paul. Right. Yeah. You got, you got to, uh, number one, figure out what people want to see. Number two, you got to figure out something you can do that no one else is doing or that you can do better than anybody else, right? Mm -hmm. And if, if you do that, like, you know, video gaming was not a thing on YouTube at one point. Mm -hmm. And it became a thing because a handful of pioneers made mm -hmm. it a thing, right? Yeah. Fidget spinners weren't a thing. Okay, so <laughs> but, 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 I mean, you know, I, it's so funny. I think back to three years ago at VidCon. And I'm listening to, to Susan doing her little address. And she's talking about gaming on YouTube and how it become the number one category on the platform. Crazy. And she's like, what yeah. will be the next yeah. surprise category that comes around the corner. Well, it turned out it was like leafy. It's <laughs> but, yeah. but, hate, <laughs> hate speech, monetized right, hate right, speech. It was, but, uh, monetized bullying. But it was- it, That I mean, died off fast. Thank gosh. Yeah. yeah. It, it really died off. Do you off. know what? I, I don't know if I, I feel like I took that very personally, that whole thing, because I don't want to toot my own horn, but I, I think we kind of popularized that genre. Can I say that? No, I can believe that. I, I agree entirely, yeah, actually. Yeah, I think when we yeah. started- Like reaction videos, like, when we started, there were only reaction videos like Jinx style, where people sit and watch the video. Those the have been around video. forever. Those have right, always right, been around. Like, right. And then when I when we started, we felt like <coughs> there was no one that's actually commenting and like putting, putting some in this sketches, effort. putting some effort into it. So that's how I remember it. I don't know if maybe someone else was doing it. But well, I don't but remember. when we started, pranksters were super popular, and the basically when we had our first big break and when I got super passionate about making videos, it came from me watching these prank videos getting millions of views and I was like, fuck, this shit is so stupid and nobody's talking yeah. about it. So, like, it all, our channel was kind of born from that. And I think for a long time, I remember thinking we were slamming all the pranksters from Vitaly mm -hmm. to Prank Invasion right. and there was no one else doing it. Mm -hmm. And then, after being successful at that for like a year, then like, all these commentary channels started propping up Yep, and they were doing it like fucking like just really lazy well, like, and shittily and mean really they, mean right. they started really, doing it really daily mean. too like, and daily yeah and i was like fuck these guys are kind of ruining my shit i like <laughs> kind of stopped making reaction videos for a long time because i'm like this is so stale every and once horrible. in a while mm -hmm. every once in a while i would see somebody compare what you did to that right and when they do that someone on, like i'd see it on reddit and someone would immediately be like but he actually is that's nice transform he actually transforms the yeah. content right and in some <laughs> cases even so much as replicates it and then so much and, and adds to it and that's the difference between what you and anybody else in that category ever did was I, you at the very least at the very least there was generally more commentary than there was the the original video, and you very rarely showed the entire video. It yeah, of course. We were and then, but of course, became, we're the one who gets sued. When, <laughs> of course. But when you, you're the guy who 
popularized costumes and and mm. sketches written around it and recreating it and of course flopping around in dog turds in your front yard or, or, or everyone's or, doing that right right <laughs> like that's what that's what always drew me to your content so I, when people would ever lump you in i would always see somebody immediately and if they didn't i would I would, you know, my little secret Reddit account where I post everything. <laughs> I would then be like, well, here's the thing. That's dope. It's a that's very cool. transformative nature. <laughs> and I think that's so important. Right. I mean, and then again, again, like I said, you don't, you don't hit hard. Yeah. That's you the you th- hit with memes. Honestly, right? mm-hmm. that's the thing that bothered me the most is like, there's kind of a lot of responsibility that comes with that. Yeah. And when we first started, we had under a hundred thousand, we we're making reaction videos. We could talk shit and take shots at anybody because we were punching up like right. so hard. Right. And then it came to a point where we had a couple million and we had this realization like we used to always think, I wonder if this person will see our video. And then we came to this point where we realized they're going to see our video. They're going to see it like within five minutes. Yeah. No, and days, and so. I need to make sure that I'm not I don't want to fuck anyone's life up. I don't right. want to, yeah. you know. And so they came out and they, they didn't have any moral thoughts. They didn't have any scruples. They would shit on anybody. Yep. They would say anything and they were just they were fucking. I mean, YouTube was a really horrible place for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And when that, I, it all to me really came to a head with the Tommy NC incident. Yeah. Like that was the one that I was like, all right, we we, we hit we hit the line now. That's this, it. Yeah. That's yeah. where this is where it has and, to stop, right? And that whole mm-hmm. situation was fucked because like they were all blurring the lines. Like Keemstar was talking to him about yeah. how. He's fine. He has fake autism. You remember that? <laughs> Keemstar was on this crusade. He doesn't yeah. actually. It's like, that was oh my ridiculous. God. ridiculous. Yeah. Because I don't know. Keemstar was just riding Leafy's dick that the whole time. Ridiculous. And I, have, I have a story. It happened actually, again, it by the talks. way. For Tommy? No, for... it happened with another kid with autism that really? Leafy made fun of him. And it's yeah, just like. After Tommy, yeah, anyway, it was I another can't. one. I, I, I have whatever. a story to talk about responsibility on YouTube. So I will go ahead and say uh, all of this is alleged. Because I also did this not like proven, this. This is proven, 100% guaranteed. Right. <laughs> um, but I made a Francis video uh, right at, this pushed me for like 750,000 subs. This video alone almost pushed me for like 750,000 subs to like half a million. Um, wow. It, wow. Uh, right, uh, uh, sorry, well, sorry, 750 to 1.5 million. Double my subs. Holy when fuck. I, it was that whole Xbox versus PlayStation mm-hmm. era where they're coming out with the Xbox One or they're coming out with the PlayStation 4. Right. And the console wars are ri- really raging. Mm-hmm. And so there's a gentleman by the name of at, by the name of Adam Orth. Hi, Orthy, if you're watching, um, this is all alleged. So please don't sue me. Hundred uh, percent. This confirmed. is the version of the story as I know it. Okay, um, he started mouthing off on on Twitter about him and a friend were talking on Twitter, thinking no one would ever see it, and they're talking about how the Xbox One is going to be an always online device, hmm. and people are like sending him questions like, well, here's the thing, I don't have good internet where I live. In a rural area, how am I going to use my Xbox One? Mm. And he goes, "Why would you live there? Move to a city, you know." Right. Mm-hmm. And like another guy's like, "Well, I I'm a naval officer on a nuclear submarine. We play Xbox 360 there all the time. Will it work if I don't? I won't have access for six months at a time. How will it work?" And he's like, "It won't." Also, what's a nuclear submarine? Like just being kind of mouthy right. and kind of tongue and cheeky, but people didn't take it that way. So, mm. as that story is breaking. I make a Francis video about it, and I call him out by name. Mm-hmm. So the next day, he gets moved to a less powerful position at Microsoft, and then soon after, he resigns. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he kind of goes into hiding for a while. And then I hear from someone secondhand, hey, do you remember a guy by the name of Adam Worth? No, I really don't. Uh, well, you made a video about him, and he actually talks about you in his speech about what it's like to be the subject of internet hate that he's now doing wow. at college wow. campuses and, and corporations. And I'm like, really? That sounds like a little wow. bit of a fuck bag. Well, I mean, honestly, okay. <laughs> I, okay, you can say, you're gonna I go, say that. Hold on. If you're going <laughs> right. to go from being an asshole right. on Twitter and poorly <laughs> representing your company and getting called out to quitting and then doing speeches on tour about being bullied, you're kind of a fucking... <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, maybe. But I, his goal with the, the his goal with the speeches would be just to prepare other people for you got to watch what you say on the internet and if you do if you do say what something rev, stupid what on the internet idea. what can happen to you can happen to me right okay so uh, so I fuck this guy okay, you're I'm, kidding, I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm okay. kidding I'm kidding so I go I'm to, just kidding I'm so kidding. I, I go to the very the very first game awards Jeff Keeley and I have known each other for a while Jeff's been a fan of mine I've been a fan of Jeff yeah Dorito Pope the whole nine yards I love that guy Dorito uh, Pope yeah you don't know you never seen the he. 
<laughs> so to get sidetracked. No, we. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, actually, right. I'm curious about the Dorito. It's a, it's a meme. Google it. Yeah, you'll okay, love it. Okay. I'll check that. Uh, but he. Um, I don't want to sidetrack you for that. Uh, I'm at the first Game Awards and I'm presenting with uh, I Justine and Justine's just like one of the sweetest people I've ever met. And we're like playing 3DS backstage and just goofing off. And she introduces me to Reggie Filame uh, from Nintendo, and and then Peter Moore from EA, mm-hmm. who in all, you know. If you don't know Peter Moore, he's pretty much a Bond villain in real life. Oh. Like he's straight up terrifying, and he's the guy who came to EA with like the ideas of games as a service and milking the customer and microtransactions. Because mm-hmm. he's a CEO first, a gamer last. Love it. Mm-hmm. Right? What a great guy. And so uh, he presented me my game award last year when I won Trending Gamer. It was so awesome. You were like, "Fuck I you!" I was like, but no. "Thanks for the award." <laughs> well, we've kind of always. I mean, him and Francis have always kind of always jousted. <laughs> and so he walks up to me, and in his very very British voice, and I'm gonna probably this is probably it's gonna be on Neogaf 30 seconds after I do this to, uh, uh, imitation of him. But he's like, Francis, <laughs> have you played our new Dragon Age game? <laughs> and I'm like, no, sir, I really haven't had the time. And he goes, well, you'll have to make time. It's got 40 hours of gameplay in the main quest alone, My 80 God. hours of side quests. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, please go ahead and shoot me in the dick with a laser now. Is there going to be a dude that's going to throw a hat to chop my head off? Which Bond villain are you today? I don't know. But then he walks away, and I'm, like, shaking. I'm just shaking because that guy's scary. I want to see. So what's his name? Let's Peter what? Moore. He's scary Let's to get me. a picture of this guy up. Peter Moore from e- EA. Mm-hmm. And uh, he recently got moved to... Uh, he's headed up their esports division for a while. Oh, yeah. And I oh, think yeah. Look at this. Now I think he's running a team. Let me pull this up. Yeah. He's a, this now, guy's running a team? I, I think something like that, or maybe a sports thing. He, def- he definitely has I'm like a... I'm not sure what a, he's doing uh, exactly now. Dr. Evil, was that the one from... <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. He's, now, he's really... Now, we, I've actually got to talk to him beyond this experience, and he's a nice guy, but in that instance... That goatee. He was There's terrifying. About I thought he was goatee. going to kill me. I know. That smile, man. It's like it's... That it's, smile, yeah. the squinty eyes. All right. So, the uh, he could, he, you know what he could do? He could fashion the sides of his hair into like horns almost and get a, like a little meme going there. Anyway. Um, so <laughs> he walks away and I'm just shaking. Like, I think I may have. Did he poison me? I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry I ever said bad things about your company, sir. And then who's standing behind him? Adam Orth. And Adam Orth walks up to me and he says, hey, do you remember me? Oh, uh, and you. And I'm like, yeah, no, I do. I remember you. Adam Orth, right? He goes, yeah, that's me. And I'm like, well, how are you doing these days? He goes, well, I'm good. I'm here presenting uh, a game for my company. And I'm like, so you landed on your feet then, huh? And he goes, yeah. And he walks away, and like, that was the worst exchange of my mm. life. He hates you, right? I, I, I don't know. I don't. I like. couldn't read him or at he all. He definitely held a grudge, right? I like, but he's aware, like, you know. Wow. And I'm like, oh, I need to be careful with what I say, mm-hmm. because that affects people's lives. And even yes. if he's the one yeah. who took the first misstep, yeah, I amplified it. Yeah. And so what I learned from that experience was not only that. But then I got to meet like Major Nelson. I, I, I got to meet the guys over at PlayStation, Sid Schumann, and and um, the CEO at the time, uh, Adam Boys. Those guys. I got to know all of these people. And what I did not know is that the gaming industry, those people, those companies, they watch my stuff all the time. Hmm. All the Francis sketches. They get sent from email hmm. chains. And if they have a product coming out and and I make a video about it, it that team yeah. will get sent that video over and over and over again, hmm. uh, to the point that. Major Nelson joked, and I, I don't know if this is true or not, he said the engineers occasionally will say, what will Francis think about this <laughs> when they're designing that's stuff? Funny. Um, and then like, my friend Barnacles Nerdgasm used to work for Microsoft confirmed that for me, so I think that's true. So, but yeah, I try to always think, I try to always think, who am I going to affect in this? How am I going to affect them with this? And there's that responsibility. I know it's, I know you've talked about it's it hard. on you too. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. hard. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's, I have ambivalent feelings on it because on one hand, I mean, it, it really depends on your approach. If you're reasonable with your response, then sometimes people need to take responsibility for their own actions. Right. Otherwise, you, what, I can't talk about anyone who fucked yeah. up because right. it might ruin, like, the, it's like the Cia Scolato thing. Like, those guys got really fucked up yeah. by it, but it's like, I don't feel bad about that at mm-hmm. all. No. Mm-hmm. In that case. Because occasionally, and like, I don't, okay, so but we, I, we approached that video very responsibly. Yeah. We, right. we didn't, I feel like we didn't overstate anything. We represented the facts. Yeah. I think that it was a very straightforward, like occasionally when you yeah. do shitty things, eventually the bill comes due. Like that's just that's the reality right. of, that's of right. it, right? And like I just 
I personally choose not to be the person that delivers the judge that's or the jury, fair. right? Like I, mm-hmm. that's that, fair. that helps me sleep at night. Yeah, Everybody's right. like, that's oh, stressful. you're so soft. Like you're such a pussy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, but I, when the camera gets turned off, I have to live with me. Yeah, that's right? true. I have it's to sleep stressful. at night. <laughs> Dude, you know? absolutely. And so, like, people are like, oh, you let those, you let those <coughs> feminists tell you what you're allowed to say, what you're not allowed to say. No, not really. I just know what I feel comfortable saying. Dude, that's mm-hmm. totally respectful that you yeah. make that decision because you know that it's going to affect you right. badly. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I totally relate to that. I like mean, that CSGO video was very stressful when we posted it. It was kind of scary. I was yeah. when we. I remember when it was went from unlisted to publish. I was like, yeah. "Fuck, here we go. This is going to be a shit storm." Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. Like I said, man, if you're in the business of putting shit into the world, eventually you're going to have to eat your own shit. <laughs> right? That's just yeah. like that's the situation they found themselves in. Yeah. And that bill had to come due eventually, and it did. Yeah. And I'm glad, you know, I'm glad you pulled the trigger on this stuff. Something I always ask myself is like how, okay, when we approach a video, and it's one of the reasons we're making less reaction videos because there's just not that many people out there who deserve to get goofed on. Yep. But it's like, okay, how much does this person deserve to me to be goofed on right now? And I have to measure our... Also, like, I just treat it by now in a way where I know they're going to see it. So right. that's already in your head. Yeah. So you, you make it differently because you're you talking know to a person. See it. Right. And I know there's a good chance we're going to run into them, too, in real of life. Course, yep. That's so, ooh, we ran that, into. Um, that happened to us with a few people. So do we ran into T. We ran into actually Cindy both of them. Did you? I first ran into T. Martin like three days after we dropped that video. How'd that go? He we didn't actually, see me. We, we like, ran. I fucking, <laughs> I, after the, we, dude, right after we posted that video, we went down to Florida to meet DJ Khaled. Right. And while we were there, we went to Disney World. Or no, Universal. Yeah. And fucking, who was there who we saw wandering around Universal but T. Martin three days after? In Florida, we came from New York. I'm like, what mm-hmm. the fuck? It, my, it blew my mind. I saw him immediately, and I had a panic attack because he's, like, actually really big guy right tall and lean and he fucking kill me i'm not sure how he'd react if he saw me but i was like you we gotta go <laughs> and we jammed scared the shit out of me but pretty recently <laughs> yeah pretty recently we ran into a syndicate yeah we ran into pro syndicate oh, wow. in a, a party. party how'd that go it was awkward it was brutal i bet it, it was, was very brutal. awkward <laughs> it was brutal i bet yeah. well you know the only person i think in the entire world i would not want to run into from would be probably nicole arbor Mm. <laughs> and I'll tell you something that no one I she's gonna she's gonna find out I mentioned her name and she's gonna latch on to it and have a how like I just know how she's gonna react to this. But here's why. Um she made that VidCon last year. I saw her and Matt. We sat at the bar, we drank, hung out for an hour. Uh I, I kept trying to talk to her. And she wasn't really interested in talking to me. It was kind of loud. Mm. She's on the other side of the table anyway, so she's talking to her friends a little more. I'm talking more to Matt. And uh, I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't really hit it off with her, which is weird because I hit it off with most people. Okay. Mm. You know, and uh, – but it's probably just, just so loud of there, and we didn't really get a chance to talk. So yeah. uh, but as the con progresses, I see her and Matt all the time. She's all smiles. He's all smiles. I love Matt. And, uh, and then two weeks later, she goes home and makes their fat people. Two weeks later, uh, two, and I like, and so uh, it was very hard to not take it personal huh. because she had just spoken with me, and like one of the topics that me and Matt would talk about is it all, often comes up because people are interested. I look like a sideshow freak. I mean, people are going to eventually talk about it a little bit. Or they're going to want to know, or I'm going to bring it up out of un- uncomfortableness. <laughs> and I can't help but think it had to be a little personal. Hmm. Now it probably wasn't. She probably doesn't think that way. <laughs> You're afraid but that I she like it kind of person. You mm-hmm. think in your mind she's like she met you like which one and of the, then that inspired her to right. make the like video. Like which one of those oh, jokes that's fucked up. Yeah, which one of those jokes what? in there was about me? Might have been might have been one. But I I, I, I totally I see what you mean. My paranoia, what you mean. Yeah. Right? And so that would be the only reason. Like anybody's a well to have whatever opinion you want to have. You can say whatever you want to say about yeah. fat people. We talked about it a little bit before the show, like the fat people hate yeah, guys. Lo- they can do their thing. I don't really care. It doesn't really bother me. Even when they send nasty shit to the P.O. box or to our front door or stuff like that. They do that? Oh, yeah. That's really? Yeah. The really? fuck? Yeah, it's like, what? That is what? just fucked. We have, that what? is crazy. What, what, for example, did you get? So there's this meme that my wife is cheating on me with, like, some, like, good-looking friend or like our friend okay um but our friend is like in a a monogamous long-lasting homosexual relationship and so it's like so absurd they would pick that guy as the guy that my wife's cheating on me with there's not even a shred of like insecurity (laughs) right but there's all this like 
stuff about how, um, all this stuff about how, like, I can't sexually satisfy a woman. And here's the thing. I can't do to a woman like George Clooney's going to do, okay? But, but here's <laughs> well, the thing. Well, none of us can, to be fair. <laughs> right. but, but there are things I'm pretty good at. And, uh, you know, I haven't had a lot of complaints from the handful of women who made the bad hey, decision. Hey, Boogie, get place, in there, boy. You know? And get that. my wife seems to be very, very quite happy with it. <laughs> nice, dude. Um, you know, enough to where she married me. Can so, we get a way of? Right. Hell yeah. But, uh, but uh, so, you know, one time they sent, like, a... A dildo to the P.O. box. It's like uh, a giant black dildo to satisfy my wife with. Because uh, obviously I couldn't do that's it. That's pretty wild. Stuff that's like that. Gross. And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty wild. Somebody, I mean, those giant black dildos probably set you back, too. Yeah, I think it was at least 40, 50 bucks, man. <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> that was a quality dildo, yeah. And now it's just like, we, just, we I, keep, I, keep, I kept that. It's yeah, in the garage. you should. That's a great. It's nice. If we ever need it, it's there. <laughs> It's a weapon, really. Yeah, I could kill somebody. That's a good prop. Like, yeah, it's a good prop. I mean, like that's the thing. That's the internet. You can have whatever opinion you want to have. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I think that maybe some like nasty stuff to the PO box kind of crosses line. Yeah. I can still take a oh, joke. Oh, it is. It totally I can still take a joke. At least it's not like threatening. That that's. At least it's still a PO box. Though, yeah, PO box. And not your that's house. true. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, we we get boxed, like mm-hmm. routine, like every three months for some reason, and I never like understand why they're like so excited to know where my address is. Because, like, I don't really care that you know. Like, what are you going to do? Show up? <laughs> You're going to knock on the door? You're going to send some pizza to my house? Well, I like pizza. <laughs> send it over. Sometimes I get a surprise pizza. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because they won't, they won't, none of the pizza areas in the house will deliver unless we prepay uh, because they're, they're used to us getting pranked. Uh, so if you send you a serious? pizza, it's prepaid. Wow. So we'll just eat it. Thanks for the Does thanks that for happen? Pizza. Yeah. They, I have just, a times. they just prepay a pizza. Well, we, had, we had somebody link me to the tour network once. And someone put out $3,500 in Bitcoin to have someone assassinate us. And then on the same night, what the yeah, fuck? Uh, Wait, what? What? somebody paid 3500 bucks, had an offer on the tour network of 3500 bucks to assassinate me. And I don't know why. I mean, this is crazy, right? But they had the wrong address. Uh, so, Wait, what the what? fuck? Yeah. That, Hold on. This is How tiny. did you find out that someone was trying to put a hit on you? Yeah. Okay, so... And uh, it's real? It's not a joke? I mean, I, it, nothing happened, so I guess it was a joke. You're not, yeah. Maybe the joke was on them. Maybe somebody took their money and just laughed about it, right? But so I, it, it, it was all related to that PlayStation 4 unboxing. So it was like some Xbox kid who did it. That's the craziest part about it. Dude, okay, if the <laughs> Xbox PlayStation people can beef to the point of trying to assassinate you, yeah. then I have to say there's no hope for humanity. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. There is no hope for the Middle East, for our country. And they even have the money. Because right. you're saying 3500 Right, like 3500 bucks in Bitcoin. Fuck <laughs> me. Which would be now worth like like 50000 in Bitcoin or something. It would be oh, ludicrous. Yeah. Whoever took that money. Anyway, so what <laughs> happened was we have uh, PlayStation 4 contacts us. And like, Boogie, we want to give you PlayStation 4. Uh, because of your Francis video, we all thought it was hilarious. You're like, I love right. to take you up and on I'm, that, but I'm, I'm will be killed by the Xbox. <laughs> well, I did, I, if I had known, <laughs> I still would have done it because it was cool. Uh, but Sid Schumann shows up at my house and he's got a PlayStation, and I'm like, so I get to film this unboxing? And he's like, yeah, and I can do it however I want to. He's like, yeah, and I, I think Sid maybe took it personally. I didn't put him in the video, but I wanted it to be realistic. I wanted it to seem like a real Francis thing, mm-hmm. right? So. Um, and it's not paid promo or anything. They're just giving me the damn thing yeah. to have. Yeah. And so I, 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 I don't have to shoot anything. I don't have to do anything, but I want to do this because I know people are going to love it. Yeah. And so I'm like, let's pretend you guys special delivered it. You know, not by you, Sid, but just random UPS or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we need a box. Mm-hmm. So my friends who are hanging out and wanted to meet Sid, they go to their house and get a box. And we forget to blur out Mm. the address mm. okay. yeah. so the address that gets leaked the first time they eventually get my address right but the address that gets leaked the first time Wasn't is my, my neighbor's address yeah. my friend's address uh-huh. and so when they put the uh, assassination hit on tour network they sent it to my house then to show like they sent an email to me hey man you need to see this I send this through some crypt curd VPN some random know, person right? sent it to but, him yeah, and he's like hey man okay. you need to see this probably the kid who set it up you click on it Download it, had it out, download the Tor browser, figure out how to use it, click on the link, finally click on the link. There it is, there's the hit. And I was like, oh my, oh my God. Oh my God, that's not the right address. So mm. I grab my phone, I call my friend Jason. Jason, you need to get out of your house. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. Ding dong. Jason, what is happening right now? Someone's not at the door. Don't answer oh my it. God. Don't answer oh the door. Like Are you kidding me? <laughs> and so my friend Jason and my friend Ellis, who lived at that address, uh, they're like, oh, my God. I don't know. They're hiding around the corner. Who is it? 
Domino's. They sent That's what pizza. an assassin would say. Right? <laughs> they sent a pizza. So they're like, can you step out of the house to see if it's actually a Domino's vehicle? And I step out of the house, and there's a Domino's mm. vehicle with a sign on. And I'm like, dude, answer the door. <laughs> it's like, I'm not answering the door. We don't want pizza. <laughs> it's like, it's just completely bizarre that hate gets to that level sometimes, but it does. But, That's like, crazy. I, you know, I, it's funny to me. Like, it bothers me a little bit. Well, you know, yeah, that would bother I'd rather, me. I'd rather just uh, like watch Netflix and go to sleep. I mean, yeah. but it, it makes for good stories, you know. That's that is. But that is also one of the reasons I'm like maybe I need to step Francis back a little bit because maybe they're not trying to kill me. Maybe they're trying to kill Francis. They want to kill Francis. Just right? Do them the favor, right? You should make a, de- a Francis suicide video where you like a Fight Club oh, thing. Oh my you... god, that would be so good. <laughs> yeah. I, I've always I, I did the epic rap battle. I'm sure, sure you haven't seen it, but. So I finally pushed like a post a million views, which you you wake up and squirt out well, a million yeah. views in the morning. But um, <laughs> a little epic rap battle had got it produced by my friend Weeble from Weeble Stuff. Do you remember Weeble Stuff? I don't. Like I never Weeble saw and that. Bob. Uh, do you know Badgers? 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 Yes. Ba- that guy. Cool. He's yeah. awesome. Man. He's incredible. Um, but he he produced that song for me, and I that was the very first time I ever did like boogie versus francis kind of thing mm-hmm. and try to keep it super meta. And I think eventually that storyline will happen. But I need to lose some weight so I can move more and act more i mean you saw me trying to get in here i'm 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 falling apart man well you gotta do your thing yeah well i get the surgery and my surgeon's like uh i'm like so i could lose how much from this he goes if you don't try at all and you screw this up maybe 150 pounds wow really what What? you're like just from nothing right like just right without really trying and he's like but if you push it 300 so let me I'm ask like, oh, you. 300, that put me at 200 pounds. You think I can be under 200 pounds? 200, that's that? like, that's wow. where I am. Right. Yeah. It's like, I absolutely guarantee it. I'm like, so you're talking about adding years to my life. And he goes, Steve, I'll be honest with you, I, I think we're adding decades. <laughs> wow. wow. And I'm like, oh, because I'm 43, that makes me 60. Now, that was good in one way. I was like, man, that's so, I'm going to get to live forever. I'm going to spend more time with my wife. And, oh, my well, God, you YouTube won't forever. be around in 20 years. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you about this um, this surgery. Yeah. So how is it? They It's when they reduce the size of your stomach? Right. A lot of people get confused because they think I'm getting liposuction. Right. Which is not yeah, something, something, something an obese else. person could get. Somebody y- your size might get. Yeah. To remove five or six pounds of, of stubborn fat that won't mm-hmm. leave a certain area, yeah. right. or like a, a, a you know a, a model might get that done if mm-hmm. they're having trouble getting a certain shape to a certain area, right? Yeah, like that's a cosmetic surgery. You couldn't do that to me. You can't take three hundred pounds off of a body and expect it to live, right? right? Yeah, and it's taking, shocking. And taking ten pounds off of me wouldn't do anything, right? Right. So what they do for me, what they're doing for me, I'm getting the the gastric bypass where they'll they'll sever ninety percent of my stomach hmm. and wow. then just move it off to the side. And it'll stay in my body, but it just won't be So connected. your stomach will so actually you... be only 10% of its current size? It'll be the size Whoa. of an egg. Holy shit. So what? basically yeah. when you eat, you'll feel really full Right, like literally fast. I'll feel full off of a thimble of, of milk. Holy you know, shit. When I was in Israel, wow. I, I was working as a waitress. Yeah. And I, there, there was a couple sitting at a table, and they ordered one dish, one plate of fish, and it had like, a fish fillet and like a side right and they shared it and they both had they didn't even were, weren't close to finishing it yeah, yeah. they had like a little bite and then i was like they were sitting there and i was like are you guys done like uh, are you still eating and they're like no we're full and i was like how are you full <laughs> like that, both sur- and yeah. they told me they did that surgery oh wow yeah, yeah. so are you uh, i know that the risk of of losing weight and happens with all of us is gaining it back right is that something to that you're that works with this kind of surgery or is this just different i have scoured youtube trying to find the answer to that question and Mm -hmm. i've also done the the studies and the reason i decided to do the bypass the traditional bypass over the sleeve is because what's the the sleeve the sleeve so with a bypass they take 90 percent of the stomach they move it off to the side Mm -hmm. they leave it connected so the juices and stuff it produces come down Mm. then i have a working stomach of about 10 percent the size of an egg um, and that gives a satiation reset. It gives a reset on you know how full I feel and how satisfied the brain becomes. So a lot of people don't realize there's like a little second brain on the top. Yeah, of Yeah, I've stomach, read about that. Right? This, the stomach really? brain right, that tells you when to eat, when not. Well, to Well, yeah, okay. I mean, you feel okay. a lot of emotions in your stomach, right? Yeah, yeah. it's kind of interesting. So it uh, that gets kind of a reset too. Then one of the coolest things they do is they bypass a large part of the intestines. Someone my size is overeating their entire. Wait, place. wait, wait! You that's part of the same surgery. It's a part of the same surgery. Oh, they, they wow! Will, they will then leave a good chunk of the intestines not 
like they bypass it. They so just take. They're they going to bi- bring something right. up from the bottom and bring it up here. Wow. So I, when I when I do eat food again, I'll absorb less nutrients. So I have to eat nothing but superfoods. What's the, rest the of my purpose life. of that? Wow. Um, because I have actually stretched my intestines out so much. Whereas you might eat some food and get 80, 90 percent of the calories. I'm getting every calorie. Because it sets in there for a really long time. So this mm. is part of the effort to lose weight. Right, to get me back to fairly a normal you, digestive you, system. Got it. And so, yes, if I wow. really try at the year and a half mark to start over eating again, I could probably, within 10 years, get back to my size. You mm-hmm. would, you, you can... I'd have to really try. Mm-hmm. But the stomach is capable of stretching, ex- out. stretching out to the right. same size as it was? And eventually I will have... My stomach right now, they said, is probably the size of a football, I think is what he said. Mm. A normal stomach would be the size maybe of a catcher's mitt or a little smaller. Mm. Um, and and what I'll have is an egg. He said two an or three egg. years down the road, I'll probably have that normal size catcher's mitt. Mm. And that if I, if I really try to screw it up, if I put some real effort into it, then I could get back to here. Mm-hmm. But I have no intention. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but, like, the problem is a lot of people think, you know, that's the easy way out. Number one, there's a one in a thousand chance on July 25th I won't wake up. How many? What's the percentage? One in one thousand. There's that's a one in one thousand pretty... chance the surgery will kill me. That's I feel scary. like there's that percentage on right. almost any surgery. Right. And it, it's pretty One close. in one thousand. They actually say good. it's more dangerous to get scary. your gallbladder taken out. Oh, shit. But it's still an optional surgery. Yeah. I'm yeah, taking no, that risk dude, for no good reason. Dude, that's yeah. terrifying. Right. Then that's secondly, yeah. um, I'll never be able to eat sugar again because of something uh? called dump, dumping syndrome. Wow. So it'll be a good six months to a year that I, if I ever eat sugar, it will not cause me to become violently ill, both front and back. That helps with the diet. Right. <laughs> um, and then I basically have to eat superfoods for the rest of my life because if I don't, I will lose lean mass. So I have to target like 106 grams of protein in a day. Mm. But how do I do that with a stomach that small? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I have to literally, I just be, have to eat whey protein with a spoon Interesting. You know, mm-hmm. to be able to, to. So it's a complete overhaul. And a lot of people think. Well, why not just lose the weight the normal way? And the answer is because I've tried mm-hmm. over and it's over hard. and over again. Yeah. But yeah. the statistics show, the numbers show that the majority of people that lose it gain it back. You lose it, you gain it back. Well, I, first, the I surgery think, is intervention. I think it's, it's, it's worth saying yeah. to people because I think a lot of people say, why don't you just lose weight? Why don't you just go on a diet and exercise? But I think at this point, and I mean, you have like an eating disorder, right? right? It's like an OCD yeah. thing. It's yeah, not right. just, exactly. you're not like a most normal people who can just be like. Well, that's what I was going to say earlier. Somebody, I mean, I think that's really important for people to understand. Somebody yeah. gets 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight. Chances are they don't have a lot of discipline and they, don't, they, they like food a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, if somebody gets maybe 100 pounds overweight, 150 pounds overweight, um, they probably lack discipline and education. Hmm. They probably don't really understand right. what they're doing and why they're doing it wrong. Right. Um, I think if you're getting 150 pounds or more overweight, there, there's some mental disorder. issues there. There's mental issues there, right? I agree. And I know what my mental issues are. In fact, before I qualified for the surgery, I had to have years and years of therapy hmm. to identify why I overate, how, what causes it, and what mm-hmm. led to this, and stuff like that. I know exactly what my issues are. A lot of big people don't, you know. And that's when you go back to my friend who I mentioned, who's on that weight loss show. He'll tell you right now the reason they put on the weight is because I didn't deal with the mental stuff first. Hmm. And so when it came, the shit got hard again. I ate. Hmm. And I have with YouTube has done that for me, right? Like the the getting to meet you guys and getting to be on a show like this. I'm gonna this. I'm gonna carry this high for a long time. The high <laughs> pizza can't do this. Ice cream can't make me as happy as I am today. Getting to do this, right? VidCon is is like heroin if 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 pea food is is aspirin. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so I've got so much going on in my life between <coughs> the wife, the dog, the family, cool. buy, buying a house in the oh, – I bought a house in the nice. home – I in the town I was homeless in, Ethan. I was homeless That's awesome. for six yes. weeks of my life. Had nowhere to wow. sleep, nowhere to go, sleeping on my roommate's uh, dorm room floor, breaking into buildings at the campus, sleeping on couches until I got up first in last month's rent. And, that same, and then we just bought my dream house in that same town. Congratulations. Wow, congratulations. So I don't – I mean, food is just a nuisance to me now. It doesn't really do much. <clears throat> I think know? that it's really important to educate people because, like, we were talking before we went on air about fat people hate. This yeah. subreddit, yeah. super controversial subreddit that was, like, number one on Reddit for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. For a long time, it was on the front page. And Reddit shut it down for being a hate a hate subreddit. But I have, like, mixed feelings, as yeah. we said. Because on one hand, people need to understand that people of a certain size have a have a – a eating disorder right it's not just like oh i'm lazy and i don't care and i just eat because i'm fat like i think most people of a certain size are painfully aware 
right. of and unhappy with their right. weight. And right. like you have to be compassionate to understand that. The part that rubbed me wrong about fat people hate, or the thing that I identified and thought was funny about fat people hate right. was like the fat people fallacies, right? Yeah, I love like, that stuff yeah, too. Where yeah, where they're like, I don't know why I'm fat. I ate, I only had one pint of ice cream this morning. And that subreddit, like, this shit's that gold. subreddit yeah. does still exist, and I still subscribe to it today. Fat people logic. Oh, fat people, <laughs> right? And that was like, the predecessor. And like, yeah. it's yeah. funny because that's kind of therapy to me. I read that yeah. all the time, and I'm like, oh yeah, I, did, I have thought that way before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. wow, I never realized that. Right. But that's you know, sometimes it's the again, sometimes it's just completely. Like, uh, no one's ever actually thought that way, but it's funny to pretend that we do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But occasionally, every once in a while, I see a little bit of myself in that as therapeutic. <laughs> but I think, like, what you said, uh, education is a lot of the problem, too. Like, yeah. Ela's mom, her family's not fat people at all by any means, but she, she'll, she like, deep fry vegetables, and there's, like, no health. There's no nutrition there at that point. Like, it's just, it's just oil and, like, the semblance of some vegetables right? Right, right there's nothing healthy there and i'll be eating and i'm trying to have a lean dinner and she's like ethan eat some vegetables she said that to me and i'm like you realize that that's like not healthy right so i think a lot of these old school people don't understand right now that eating a, a right. bowl full of oil and vegetables isn't good for you i will tell you the toughest dis- debate to ever have and like there are people going to shut down the stream when i say what i'm about to say but this is juicy. Let's go, boy. <laughs> um, it's not. It's always okay. Let me put it the right way. It's always calories in versus calories out. It's always that you always have to eat less and move more. It is always that. That is always what it's has not to controversial. Happen, That's science, right? But in some cases, specifically diabetics, the math doesn't always work out. So okay, expand on that. So um, insulin resistance. Mm-hmm makes it very difficult to burn fat because insulin is a big portion of burning fat. So it comes right from my, mm. my, my hormone doctor, literally word for word. So when I lost 50 pounds while diabetic, mm-hmm. and I'm disappointed by it, and I'm like, I can't believe I've only lost 50 pounds. I, I mean, we did a liquid diet for six weeks. I brought in 1,800 calories a day. On a bad day, I put in like 2,500. Mathematically, I should have lost closer mm-hmm. to 100. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, Steve, you're diabetic. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, your body's going to choose to burn lean fat, lean meat, hmm. before it burns fat. Oh, weird. And I'm like, what? And so we go through the whole nine yards. Well, you know, let's do the test. Well, you have 275 pounds of lean mass. And so your body will choose to burn lean mass first because of the insulin resistance. And so I have to burn through my muscles. which uh, And so it just gets complicated. It gets muddy. Oh, now, sucks. we're still only talking like a 10 or 15 so- 20% margin at worst, like somebody with a terrible metabolic condition and all that yeah. stuff, it's still only a small margin. I guess mm-hmm. the, the fat but person logic is like, the, one of the classic ones is like, um, my, I have a slow metabolism. Mm-hmm. Right, right. What you're talking about being a diabetic. Right. And if you, here's the thing. Different. If you're diabetic, you yeah. could. And if you're not, if you have a sedentary lifestyle style, and you're not putting 10 oh, minutes yeah. of cardio in a day, yeah. your body won't move in the direction of fat burning. But you what have I, to prove to it that it needs to burn fat, so you need at least 10 minutes of cardio every day. But right? to some extent, I always felt like, I'm sure there's something to that, but yeah. it always doesn't, there's something that doesn't make sense, because it's like, you exert a certain amount of calories every day. You eat a certain amount of calories. Right. What hap- like, there's not, is, what's happening? In between, right? Like what? If you if you eat two thousand and you and you burn three thousand, like there's not what's what's like the magic figure where somehow your body's not burning the calories I, that it should. It beats the living hell out of me. I I do know, like in the case of insulin resistance, I guess with with the case of a bad thyroid, you're not producing hmm. the hormone know, that yeah. tells the body to burn fat. I think in the case of diabetes, your body is 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 not. That doesn't have all the chemicals there or does not respond to the chemicals correctly to burn the fat first, so it chooses lean mass. But then, and I think it probably still always keeps to the laws of thermodynamics because you can't break the laws of thermodynamics. I guess what I was going right. to say is, like, yeah, it does. Right. But, like, what happens to your body if you're not burning or you're burning? I'm confused. I believe. I'm confused on the end. I believe, I based on what I've read, that it is possible for a morbidly obese person to starve to death if they don't have the vitamins coming in. Right. 
um, if they, I think if they're taking, I think it is entirely possible for a morbidly obese person to starve to death while they're still morbidly obese if they have the wrong hormonal set in their body hmm. and the markers are off and their body's not doing what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Weird I think that's why. I think it'll eat enough lean mass first oh, wow. instead that's of the, so wild. the fat. And then, damn it, you know, you know uh, lean mass, we're talking heart muscle. We're talking right. muscle. And what, what's a muscle? Your heart. And so you weaken your heart, you'd have a heart attack and starve to death because of that. You know, I think that's entirely possible if the chemicals are wrong. I think that may that be, makes sense. That no, may have existed actually, like one in a billion people that in the does world. Make sense. It's and that's weird. not my condition. And if someone's listening right now, it's probably not your condition yeah, either. Yeah, I'm not giving yeah. you an excuse. Yeah. You still have to do the work. You yeah. still have to get with a nutritionist to figure out what your personal body needs are. You still need to get with a trainer to figure out what your exercise needs are. You need to get with a doctor who will help you figure out your weight loss patterns. Like that you still have to do the work. Right. There's no excuse to not do the work. Yeah. Or you'll die. Yeah. You know, and you'll die very unhappy and very unhealthy. That's the thing I can tell you. Yeah. You know, so let's uh, it's just let's, interesting. Though. No, it's fascinating. Yeah, I'm, it I've is. always been really fascinated by it. I want to let's let's get back into it. I'm going to take a quick break. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go yeah. to the bathroom, oh, yeah. get some more water and um, plug in this laptop to die. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> don't go away, guys. We will be right back in two minutes. And if you leave, you know, tell them what's going to happen if they leave. Ethan's gonna kill you. Wow, what the hell? That's not what's gonna happen. Who am I killing? I will cry. I will personally you looked cry. at like Boogie would, when you said that. I like didn't I was mean gonna to, kill. I didn't mean to. Ethan will kill Boogie I don't if know, you that's leave. That's what you always say. Why, well, jeez, that was dark. It's usually just like a little like uh, something bad's gonna happen, guys. <laughs> that's what you always say. All right. So, I'm gonna kill Boogie apparently if not you guys boogie. leave. So, what a way to go, honestly. Please don't leave. Everybody has I don't, to die, but I'll die a hero. I don't wanna do that. Yeah, there's like at least one guy who's like <laughs> slaying that close button. He's like, woo! <laughs> All right, we'll be right back in a couple minutes. Welcome back, guys, to the HG Podcast hi, hi, hi. with Boogie and Gila. What up, pimps? What up? Um, how, how you doing so far? You having fun? Yeah. yeah awesome. Slamming, yeah, baby. Doing good. <laughs> before we, are uh, right before we went on the air, you were saying that you had this rape story that got me oh, so God. intrigued. Because no, it's it's... I was talking about how we do this show live. And so right. I'm always careful not to say something really dumb. Oh, boy. Which hap- it happens. You know, you're doing it live. You're going to say some really stupid shit. And it already happened to me once where George Filthy Frank was sitting on this couch behind me. And we were having a conversation about rape in nature. I don't know why. I don't usually talk about rape as a subject of conversation. But I said something and George reacted behind me like, <laughs> he didn't even know he was on camera. And now I got memed into oblivion, and that video has like a million views. Yeah. So then you volunteered. I said that when I was 15 and years was old, like, and I was writing my first sketch, yeah. my first stand-up set, my first 15 minutes, mm. my first hard 15, because mm-hmm. I wanted to be a stand-up comic, did not realize That's how much standing up in it is actually involved. Shit. I'm more of a sit-down It's comic. a little bit. It's a bit you, right. Yeah. But um, I wrote a joke about a topic that's private to me. I've talked about this very, very briefly. Uh, but I had some inappropriate stuff happen to me growing up. Mm. Wow, and that is, so I'm so sorry I feel like that. I think that it's okay that I get to make this joke. I think, if, please do not neo-gaff me for making this joke, because mm-hmm. this is how I processed my shit, okay? Yeah. So here's the joke, okay? As someone who has been hurt that way, I think rape is never funny. I think rape, let me repeat, rape is never funny. It's not a joking matter. I don't think comedians should be writing jokes about it. It's never funny. Except maybe one time it could be funny. And that's when you're being raped by a clown. But that's only because you can honk his cute little nose. And when he comes, Are you kidding it's me? just confetti. I can't imagine anything more horrifying than being raped by a clown. That is literally the most scary image I've ever had in my I, life. I, I, Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> not scary. I I Jesus. I that act, I'm, not wor- I'm not traumatized by the joke. I'm traumatized by this image of being raped by a clown. Christ. Uh. I wrote, I wrote that joke in 15. I stand by it today. I think it's completely tasteless. I mean, I think yeah. that it can make a lot of people feel very uncomfortable to even hear about the topic, and I understand that, yeah. but I think the joke itself is sound. I don't think it's, a, it's like, fair enough. Right. You're not going to get triggered out of oblivion. Yeah. You're not going to have to retire right. for telling that joke. But I had, like, this... I had... Like, that's the way I deal with... That's how I deal with, like, bad stuff in my life. Mm-hmm. And since I've had a, more than my fair share of bad stuff... I have just a really messed up sense of humor. I'll tell you, mm. I'll tell you the day my brain broke for the first time, the day that I officially became a bad person. What um, that? Yeah. Okay, so my grandmother had Alzheimer's disease. Mm. I, well, I loved her to death. Ultimate was her name, but this is back in the late 80s, and she was about five years advanced in Alzheimer's, and it moved pretty quick for her, so that was pretty, pretty, pretty deep in. And uh, so 
we're, we're about 75 miles away where we lived. We were down shopping, and my mom stops at a payphone. She calls my grandfather up, her, her dad and her mom, and says, uh, Hey, Daddy Carl, is, is today a good day to visit? How's Mommy? And she says, Well, she's doing real good. She's real bright, real clear. If you want to come up, uh, now would be a good time. Well, great. She, me and the, my, my, I think me and my sister and my brother are all in the car, so we pack up. We drive that 75 miles there uh, through Mountain Hills. So it's like an hour and a half, two hours to get there. And when we get there, between that phone call and when we arrived, all hell had broken loose. My grandmother had it in her head that my grandfather was trying to kill her. Like, that's yeah. just how her Alzheimer's presented. Mm. And uh, so because of that, they'd already, like, removed all the weapons and guns and knives from the house. So there was, all there was was, like, butter knives and forks and stuff. That was something right? that had been going on for a while? Right, right, been going oh, on for a while. That's fucking so sad. Now, Alzheimer's yeah. is a cruel, yeah. cruel disease. It's got to be one of the worst things out Absolutely, there. Absolutely, right. Um, but she, um, uh, Daddy Carl got her, un- you know, got her out of her nightcoat, got her underwear on her, got her bra on her, and starts to put her pearls on her. She always wore pearls. St- started to get her pearls on her, and she got into her head that he was trying to choke her. Uh. Mm. So she decided to uh, bury the knives in the house, get them away from him so he couldn't stab her. Mm. So all there's left in the house is butter knives, right? Mm. And so she rushes out into the front of the house in the garden, and she's like digging a hole to bury these knives, and it's pouring rain, and at that exact moment, we pull up in the car. Mm-hmm. And so here's my grandmother, in her bloomers, covered in mud, <laughs> rain pouring down on her, uh, yeah. trying to bury butter knives in the garden. My grandfather screaming, Altime, get your house, get your ass in the house, you're gonna die of a cold, you're crazy. Yo, Carl, you're trying to kill me! <laughs> and my brain said, either you're gonna listen to my chemical romance every day for the rest of your life, or this is funny. <laughs> so which one are you going to choose? <laughs> well, I chose funny. I, I mean, how do you not? And uh, so I started laughing. And my mother, who was abusive, my mother who was abusive, she turns around. She goes, "What the fuck is so funny, <clears throat> Stephen J?" I have to tell. And I said, "Well, maybe she'll grow buttercups." <laughs> oh my god! Right? Because this my like, well, my mom beat well, me till I thing. went unconscious. But here's the thing. No. <laughs> There's two things. You know, I, I feel yes. like I, I always laugh in those situations too. And it reminds me, like, my favorite author and someone who's had a huge impact on me is Kurt Vonnegut. I don't know if you oh, know who that course, is. Yeah. And he was writing in, in his autobiography that he, that guy's been through some shit in yeah. his life. I mean, he's passed now, but he's seen some of the worst things. And he, he writes this really dark comedy. And he said, like, whenever confronted with death or tragedy, he always laughed. Yeah. It's just like something he felt inside of him just to laugh. That's how he dealt with it. Right. And his family members used to get super frustrated and be like, why are you laughing? Like at his mom's funeral, who he loved, he was like laughing. And they're yeah. like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He's like, I, I'm obviously mourning. It's yeah. not It's not funny per se, but right. Yeah. I don't know. You have two it's, choices that to deal with things. It's a reaction. Kurt Vonnegut actually is the – it was Kurt Vonnegut and Douglas Adams that pushed me towards – I not. I would not really say that I'm a nihilist. But I would say mm-hmm. I have very nihilistic tendencies, and I think I've embraced the absurdity of this whole thing. I think that's one of the reasons I was able to eat myself to an absurd level mm-hmm. is because I, at one point, I genuinely understand that none of this matters, right? Yeah. And so, like, uh, you know, they would tell me, "Hey, the way you're eating, you know, uh, you know, 25. Hey, the way you're eating, you'll be dead by 30." Yeah. I was like, oh, well, that's something I'd like to happen. I'm miserable, so I get to die and also eat all the food I want? Well, that so sounds you think, great. You, know? you think, like, depression had a lot or had a hand in it? Oh, absolutely, like, like straight the, up. And, like, the, 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 the being poor as well. Like, when, was, when we were homeless, uh, when we got our first month and last month's rent together, we got our first place, we would go to the CC's Pizza Cafe and spend five bucks, mm. and we would sit down for lunch, and we'd leave after dinner. And wow, we would eat as much as we could because it's the one time we're eating that day. How many calories could be, do you think you would eat in that day? Two, three thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, easy. Wow. Just right? in that city. Because I didn't know if I was eating tomorrow. Because I didn't know if I was going to have another oh, five got bucks. It. Yeah. Right. Um, and so it actually got to the point like the manager of the Fayetteville CCs knew us by name, and one day just walked over, and he's like, "Hey, what's your all's deal?" And I'm like, "Oh, I knew this day was coming. I'm so sorry that we do this, man." <laughs> oh, shit. And he goes, "No, no, it's fine, dude." You guys are always playing with those cards. What are those cards? <laughs> we was playing Magic the Gathering that oh, first game. Oh, shit. Right? That's awesome. And we'd sit there and play Magic to pass the time. And uh, he, he uh, we talked to him. He goes, well, you guys sure are in here. Well, do you guys not have anywhere to go? And we told him the situation. What a nice guy. And what he's, he's yeah. like, well, son, you don't have to worry about costing me money. He says, you know what my food cost is? <laughs> I said, what? He goes, that pizza you guys special order, the barbecue one, do you know how much I pay for that? About 23 cents. Holy God. He said, you'd have to eat 10 of those. Before it even started to affect my bottom line, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, okay. 
Well, he got to where he recognizes we're coming in. He goes, hey, those two guys get drinks today? No, they get sodas. Give them sodas. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, those guys already paid earlier. What a and nice so he guy. like, yeah, he's like one of the nicest guys. He's Christian and like openly Christian about it, but not like the kind of like proselytizing right, right. Or whatever. He's just like one of those people that like lived the life, right. like lived like exactly the life that he was told to live wow. by the good book. You know, I was really impressed with him. Uh, but that that led to this like pattern of just eating as much as I could whenever mm. I could because I so never it's knew. a lot of stuff combined. It sounds yeah, like yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's a whole host of my, I, I, I am a number. I, I did a number on myself, and a lot of people did a number on me beforehand. And so I got to be, like, straight up crazy. Like, this straight up, like, kind of, I shouldn't be able to function, but I managed to somehow. Got it crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. Well, I was watching your, um, I was watching some of your old videos about, like, the, your backstory with your family, and that yeah. shit was really... Really heavy duty it's, stuff, it's, man. It's, I mean, for the people yeah. who don't want to have to go through that, I don't want to depress you too much, but like, I read books like Flowers of Algernon, and they read to like a you know documentary to me. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You know, like it's just it's uh, it was just as messed up as it could be. Right. You know, I mean, any way that a person could be abused, I was abused, and that was on a daily basis, not a weekly, not a monthly basis, a daily basis. I just you know it was. What like, was the deal with your mom? Because I I remember hearing about it and that she was real abusive to her. She was dichot- and very angry. She was dichotomous, and and like that's one of the reasons I think it that seems common with the, these kind of right, characters. Like the more broken a person is, the more attracted I am to that person a lot of the times. Interesting. Like I could straight up befriend the most dangerous, messed up people, mm. and it's because. I try to find the good in those people. And, I, and there is. Right, and there almost yeah. always is, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's like why whenever someone who's notorious on, on YouTube, like a Daddy O5 situation, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, the very first thing I did was I heard that story. I wrote Daddy O5 on Twitter, and I'm like, can we talk? And my goal there wasn't to help him or protect him. My goal was to get involved to try to like get an advocate into the home. And he's like, mm-hmm. Boogie, they're going to take away my YouTube channel. Dude, and I'm like, worse than that, probably, dude. dude. But, you know, a good way to save face and a good way to maybe keep your YouTube channel would be to get an advocate in the home today. Contact social services in advance mm-hmm. and then get your own therapist today. I know you've got the money. We've talked about money. Mm-hmm. So get the therapist in advance. Get them into the home and film them in the home. Film a therapy session. Show that to the world. They are actively making an effort, right? Show the social service woman visiting. Let them know you're actively making an effort. And he's thinking, always oh, trying to help me with PR. No, I'm not trying to help the kids. I know when the kids, I know when the person comes in there, they're going to see what's going on yeah. and then something's going to happen. <laughs> I'm just trying to convince him that that get somebody into the home mm-hmm. it might it might <coughs> save your youtube channel right that situation, that's the only path to victory anyway that situation you know? was so fucked but like i i try that's what i try to do i try to get in i try to get into you know because i was raised by monsters so mm. whenever a monster wears their head i'm i i can't help it i just shove myself right in there and did you were you able to like talk to him was he receptive he, he was receptive to a certain point but he kept saying boogie the videos are fake boogie the videos are fake mm. And I'm like, all right. Do you believe that, by the way? It doesn't matter. I think that part That's of it, a good point, too, but... I think that part of it was scripted, right? So I think that him and his... Maybe, like, let's talk about the ink episode. Yeah, this the is, ink one. I have, this the is not specifically. Pers- this isn't personal insight. This isn't something he said to me. This is entirely alleged. Mm-hmm. Please do not sue me. This is my theory, <laughs> okay? But I personally feel like for the parents, it was definitely scripted. The ink like they one, because right, my, my right. impression was that one. I think the parents knew what they were going to do. Oh, yeah, right? they knew. No, yeah. But I think maybe the, the kid, and I think the kid is used to getting pranked and getting yeah. rewarded after the prank. Hmm. Interesting but point. But I think when I look at that video, having a severe anxiety disorder myself, when I look at that kid, it's clear that he's Dude, exhibiting tortured. extreme anxiety. Right? Absolutely yeah. tortured. Right? And I see myself yeah. in that kid. So even if he was in on it on some level... Okay. He still can't process healthy. it. Yeah, that's my so point. it doesn't even matter if it's exactly. Fake. That's my point. It's an unsafe It doesn't matter. And right. he's a kid. It doesn't know. Yeah. He, do- <coughs> he can't tell anyway. Like he's gr- he's growing in this environment that's so weird. Like right. they're pranking him. His parents are pranking him. <coughs> it's very And then unhealthy. it's over. And they're right. making videos. And like, what's even reality? And what's a also, video? Also, like they're like, living is like, from fucking over their kids it's like what yeah. kind of weird ass reinforcements yeah. yeah that whole situation was so fucked up and like it ended up with them losing their kids yeah. i don't know if that's ever happened on youtube where people lost their kids it's a new well they lost two of I the three know. right they I didn't think lose they all the, of them. i think they had the older kids still mm-hmm. oh that's good they which loved is, him anyway right which is like right that's, that's really the one they liked like it's insane and i hate to say it but literally 
they were treated like redheaded stepchildren. Like that's an old he saying was, when I was growing he up. Was, and it literally and he was. was. Yeah, he, he was couldn't believe one it. And he was treated. I've well. never seen like I. That's literally the cliche, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it happened, and that's, I still can't yeah. believe it. <laughs> uh, but that's the thing. I think, like, what little expertise I have yeah. with being abused, and then I spent a lifetime in therapy and group therapy because of it. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was another lack of education situation, right? Like I think. Maybe he did not fully understand what was appropriate and what wasn't appropriate. I mean, and maybe doesn't even have the capacity to fully like to have picked that up on himself. If that's a situation where I felt like it needed intervention, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think he was truly mean spirited. I think what he, he was, I he thought it, I think he personally thought it was acceptable, and no one had ever educated him otherwise. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Was I mean, it's possible, possible he came from a fucked up family, and that right. was just the norm. And right. then all of a sudden, you're putting it on the internet, and everyone's like, "Dude, that's not normal." Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. But at home, maybe that's normal, and where right. he came from, that's normal. Yeah. And that's, but, and that's and I'll tell you, and that's one of the most fascinating things about growing up abused, mm. because to this day, to this day, sometimes I'll remember something that happened, mm. and I'll think, "Well, that." That's not how other people experience life. That's that not, still happens. That's, that's still, still to this right. day. To even three weeks ago. Do you remember? I, like one of the m- most recent one, uh, the most recent one. I looked at my wife and I'm like, "Did you ever sleep with your mom?" Not what? sexually, but in the same bed. Oh. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Yeah." Like when I was like four or five, and I like I'd get really scared. And I'm like, "Yeah," but it was like, like an everyday thing or whatever. And she's like, "No." And like so, if I slept with my mom when I was. 12 still Mm -hmm. that would be weird right and she's like yeah so if i didn't have my own room at the Mm -hmm. age of 12 like that's weird right yeah that is weird and she's like yeah no that's that's very unusual steve yeah and i'm like so when i when i moved out of my mom's bed and not having a bed and her refusing to get me one then that's way fucked up right oh yeah Yeah. dude that is very (laughs) and i'm like i guess i've just never really thought about other sleeping arrangements i've seen it on television and i guess i kind of always knew that wasn't right hmm. but i didn't realize how not right it was hmm. that's that's a lot of the well, times yeah. how right. it is yeah with like when you're abused as a kid you at the time it may right. seem like a game or something and so i think that you have no concept you're you a kid yeah you yeah. know which is like you know i mean i've always i've always done okay with girls which is i know that's surprising you know to anybody listening but i've always done all right with girls <laughs> and uh, so one of the very first things i would always open with is like first date material for me to like, and I'm not interested in kids. And they're like, why? And I'm like, oh, because I come from an abusive home and I'm afraid that I'd be abusive to kids, so I won't risk it. And they're like, well, but you don't seem abusive at all. I'm like, and I'm not. I, I'm 100% sure I'm not, but it's not worth the risk of screwing up another person's life, so I'm not interested in kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a hell of a deal breaker for a lot of ladies, yeah. right? You want to get that uh, out there right, and but, right away. Right, like I just like straight off the bat, like, hey, I come from an abusive home. Um, my, my scale of what's right and wrong may not be perfect. You want to get that out you know? there, dude. And uh, I don't ever have kids because I don't know that I can raise Have you ever had and a really... do you still think that? Or you don't want I don't kids? think so, now. I think really the work that we've done in the last four or five years, especially the work that I've done uh, since I met my wife and with my wife mm-hmm. specifically, um, I, I think that we've, I've grown into a place where, and especially because I trust her so incredibly mm-hmm. much, mm-hmm. and she's so good handling me like you know we always the joke about your his care yeah i mean she genuinely is my care like i i can't function i literally can't function yeah i could not get through vidcon because i'm paralyzed with anxiety Mm. and so steve we need to be here in 20 minutes steve Mm. you have this here in a few minutes steve it's time to take your medicine steve it's time to eat i literally cannot function without her that's pretty yeah. dark that you're afraid of abusing kids. Yeah. Like, obviously, you, I could say from knowing you that you wouldn't do that. But just, like, the fact that that's so deep-seated in your right. mind yeah. is really so yeah. fucked up. Right. Well, I'll tell you, and it's interesting because it was visiting all – I have a brother and I have a sister. And that, you know, my brother got less of it than I did by quite a bit. My sister got way more of it but in a shorter period of time than I did. Mm-hmm. I was there the full 18 years. My brother was there for 17 um, and but he had my dad to protect him mm. uh, my, before my dad got sick. I ended up taking care of my dad, mm. and then my sister she got the just the worst wow. like crazy like stories you wouldn't believe. Maybe one day I'll she write a older book. She's older or younger? She's older. They're mm. both older. You should um, write a book. This stuff's and, really interesting. I'm just worried that it, like people would be like, I'm not buying that because that is fucking depressing. Uh, <laughs> no. But uh, but like she she I I, want, I she might hear this you know so I don't really want to yeah. speak her business but like you imagine. It and whatever you're imagining right now, that that happened, but worse. Like whatever you're thinking, wow. it she just got the worst of it. She's younger, so she ended up from, running away from the both age. your parents. Or yeah, she you... got it from both. Which so your was dad was also abusive. Well, to her, 
Mm-hmm. So, She's got the special. Yeah, right. Yeah, the so, special. Uh, she got the she got the double whammy there. And are you in touch with her still? Yeah, we talk occasionally. It's it's very broken when we do because there's a lot of history there and there's a lot of messed stuff up there. Yeah. But we touch base a couple times a year and um, she's yeah, I love her, but she's very different because of what she went through. Mm. And it's hard. It's hard, you know. Um, I think I've recovered in I think she's recovered as much as I have but in a very different way. Mm. You know, she kind of went into like a subculture and she's just part of that subculture mm. and uh, you know, I, I went into like I don't know, kind of like my brother once said to me something real funny. I I grew up with an accent. And I sound like, hey, y'all, how y'all doing today? Mm-hmm. Really? Is that your natural? That's my natural accent. Really? I, sometimes when I get wow. very anxious, I still go into it. Huh. My wife is like freaked out by it. She's like, why are you doing a voice right now? <laughs> She's like, well, honey, I'm just scared shitless now. But, <laughs> but she, uh, my brother comes home one day and he goes, if you ever want to be taken serious in this world, you got to lose the accent. Really? Because he went to really? Virginia Tech and his first year, they ridiculed him for having a, a, that deep Appalachian accent. Huh. And so it's like... It's a wonderful, beautiful accent. I, I love it. Yeah. It's so classy. When I go it's back home, thing. I go right back into it. <laughs> and, like, I'm there for 20 minutes and I'm at an Can Applebee's. Can you talk in it just for, like, a minute oh, yeah. for like, the next minute? I'll go to, I'll go to the Applebee's and they'll be like... Um, Hey, honey, what do you want? I was like, well, if y'all got Mountain Dew, I'd sure love to drink me one of them. And i tell you what, let me get one of them appetizers, please, man. I love me some appetizers. Now, y'all got wings? Now, are they hot, honey? Because I can't handle a hot one. All right, I can handle mild. You got mild? All right, well, let's get some of that. It's Ethan, like I'll tell you. Than, it's like more than an accent. It's like with it's the honey. It's attitude, boy. And, yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's a total right. transformation. And then I'm only like half Appalachian. If you really get into the mountains, right. you're like, well, I'm on the hill, I'm on the It's like right wilder. straight from King of the Hill. It's great. I love great. it. I feel yeah, like no, I'm in a movie it's when beautiful. I hear this stuff. But I tried to move into, he said, listen to the news and talk the way they do on the news. <laughs> so I started practicing. And that's how I got into all the voices and stuff. And that's like, even the Francis voices from back there. And I found I could do, hi, ho there. This is Kermit the Frog here. And, <laughs> yes. You have a great voice. Or do not. Yeah. There is no try. Judge me by my size, do you? <laughs> you should not. Right. <laughs> um, I started doing all these stupid, terrible accents and voices. And, you know, it's so funny. I had a tape recorder, and right. I would record this stuff, and I would play it back for myself, and then I'd be like, Mom, listen to this. Mom, listen to this. I had time for that shit. I'd take it to school. Hey, Dustin, will you listen to this? Uh, it's, it's okay. I don't, mm-hmm. really, I don't really think it's a funny man. Okay. I wanted someone to listen to what I was creating so bad. Mm-hmm. And kids today, I mean, I've watched probably 100 fidget spinner cringe compilations <laughs> because they could turn on the camera at any second. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're immediate, they can go live. They yeah. can broadcast to the world. That is probably mm-hmm. the worst thing yeah. about being a kid today is oh, yeah. how painfully <laughs> and permanently you can embarrass right. yourself. Right, and it's not it's not when you'll make a mistake. It's 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 not if it's I mean, when. Dude, yeah. if I if I had access to the internet and camera as a kid, oh, God. God knows what cringe so horrors would haunt me for the oh, rest God, of my yeah. life. You know? Oh, I know for a fact what I would have done, and I will never say it. But I would have definitely. Ooh, yeah, that would have been bad. What? Well, I grew up on Sam Kennison stuff. And so I grew up on, like, you know, just all this, like, super offensive humor. Mm-hmm. And so when I was oh. right, my original comedy sketches yeah. were just, like, ooh, like, dark, dark, right, right, dark. Right, right. And I guess so I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. <laughs> I want to ask you about your anxiety because that's something I've had a lot of oh, yeah. trouble with in my life. I remember um, I, 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 was, I used to be really debilitated by anxiety. I, when I, before I went off to college, I was getting, like, super severe panic attacks and, like, um, I mean, I, yeah, like depersonalized and just like super fuzzy brained yeah. and just like so out of it for like the whole time of my college. It was really hard for me to feel like I could be myself. Right. Up until, I mean, I still have trouble with it, frankly, but up until only the past like five years even did things start to like normalize to the point where I felt like I could have a normal life. Right. Like That's awesome, man. I, I'm so glad to hear that. You, I didn't know it was that bad for you. But I've only yeah, ever was, known you in recovery. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And your recovery has been so brilliant and so incredible. And now to hear that, it's it's almost hard to believe, to be frank. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah. I mean, there were it was really dark times in my, like, before, I, it started when I was smoking weed in high school, right before I left for college. Yeah. And I started getting panic attacks. And I would feel like, because um, I used to be, like, really confident and kind of, I felt like I was a sharp and confident guy. And when I whenever I smoked weed, I would get in my head and I would feel, like, really insecure and really like just not myself and i kept smoking and smoking and smoking that's what all my friends were doing at the time and i just right. wanted to hang with them and it got to this point where i just like hated myself but i didn't realize i didn't like fully understand it so it just like snapped one day so hard 
And I went from feeling like super in control and confident to just like total mental collapse. Wow. And I, I don't think I slept for like two weeks because I, I, I didn't understand what's happening. I thought I was going like schizophrenic. And it got to the point where I wasn't sleeping and I was actually like hallucinating because I wasn't sleeping. I was like, oh, fuck. I'm, I was rehearsing in my mind, like telling my parents that I was going schizophrenic. Right. This felt so real. And um, for some reason, I didn't tell anyone about it, too, which was probably the hardest part yeah. about experiencing that. I feel like talking about it was the beginning of, of recovering it. Of course. But I'm, I'm it curious. Always is. For anybody yeah. listening, it always is. Yeah, Whatever ha- the problem is you've right now, it, I, I don't care if it's a therapist yeah. or a fan or a friendly or a Reddit, subreddit or a group <laughs> therapy or a forum. It all <laughs> starts in sharing. It, 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 you literally cannot... Because and I think what people don't realize is the, the pivotal part of sharing stuff like that is, is, is twofold. The first is hearing from somebody else their experiences mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, or their vision of you yeah. or, or something like that it can be very healing. More importantly, it's organizing your thoughts. You need some and, outs- outside and processing it, right? influence because yeah. in your mind shit just gets right. but even worse like, and worse. Even when you sit down and you walk into alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous, for example, mm-hmm. and, and they make you introduce yourself and you talk about your stuff even just that three minutes, it forces you to gather everything in your brain, mm-hmm. all these loose threads that are flowing around, mm-hmm. and to put them into that three-minute speech, and then you have a better understanding of yourself. Right, exactly. And so it all starts with talking. It really does. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, not at I all. I think it's such an important No, I agree so much. Said. Like, I held it in for two weeks or three weeks, and that's it made it way, way worse. Yeah. And I think I was just embarrassed. I was embarrassed, and I felt, like, weak. And I think that's the only reason why I didn't talk about it. So I don't know. You just have to find someone to, to hear you out on it. Yeah. Is that what it's, is that what it's like for you? I mean, what's what's your anxiety more like? I don't know. Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, it's. I don't know. I'm still learning what's my anxiety because I'm having problems <laughs> like all the time. <laughs> Ours is different. It's different. For sure. Yeah, it's different. I it's... have, not self-diagnosed. Very important. Clinically diagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder. See, that's some shit, yeah. Right. And so I have social anxiety, again, clinically diagnosed social anxiety, um, but I learned to overcome that through exposure therapy, right? So Just get out there. Just force myself to do it. Yeah. And I'm still miserable the whole time I'm doing stuff. How does it manifest itself in you? Like when you say you're anxious, what are you feeling? The most common for me is a dissociative state. So I will kind of hit eject on the brain. And that's what I get, and it's yeah. the fucking worst. Well, dude. it's I actually, hate it. it's actually a tool I've I've been taught. Mm. It's actually a tool that my body used. So the very first time I ever disassociated was the very first time I ever got a near death beating, mm-hmm. and uh, so my mom just just wailed on me for a long time, and my body hit the eject tool to say, hey, you know what? This isn't happening. We're not here. Mm. This is not real. Nothing's here. And so for me, the way I describe it to try to get people to understand it it's kind of like trying to control a video game character Hmm. through a broken television Hmm. that's in an aquarium Hmm. that's across the room on another planet (laughs) depending on how disassociative i am right Right. how how far away i am from my own body but it feels very much like the matrix to me i think that's one of the easiest ways to Hmm. i feel like i'm jacked into this life and Hmm. into this body that's you know and uh so what does that mean, though, that you just don't, like, you don't care about stuff? You don't feel well, like, I mean, you're, it, you feel like just, you're watching a movie or something? I feel, I, 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 that is not a bad description, but I do still very much care, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I think people, like, people who have disassociative states, those are the people that, you know, snap one day and, like, murder somebody. Oh, I'll never fuck. do that, right? But like, how I, do you account for that? Because I'm just trying to, like, conceptualize the thing. I think I have something different now that I hear you describe right. it. I, um, I'm not really sure. I, I, well, then that, that's very separate too by the PTSD. That's a symptom of the post-traumatic right. stress. So when, when we talk about post-traumatic stress, what happens there is a circumstance will happen in the room that I'm in, mm-hmm. and that circumstance will trigger. I hate using that word. It's mostly because of you. You can say it. You get the hit. But it will tr- no, not yeah. like trigger me. Like oh, yeah. I'm very offended. And the actual. But, but actually, what it actually cause means. a yeah. uh, cause a. A chemical reaction in my brain right. that then my brain believes that the thing that happened to me then is happening again now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so it'll trigger fight or flight and it will begin to use all of the tools that it used to protect itself the first time mm-hmm. and what I perceive as reality is no longer reality 
it will create that moment in my brain again. And so my brain is like, hey, this is happening to you again, whatever terrible thing it Crazy. is that I'm remembering and that I'm, ex I'm experiencing it. Um, and then I'll still have a very like cognizant awareness that, that I am here and that this is just a safe place and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And so I have to fight my brain to calm down, to relax itself, to handle things, mm -hmm. concentrate on my breathing, mm -hmm. play with my fidget spinner, whatever. Right. Uh, mostly, re realistically, I serve, I serve social media. I try to distract myself. Mm -hmm. I carry 3DS with me all the time. Mm -hmm. I carry my Switch with me most of the time now. Those are great distraction tools. Mm -hmm. And then just get process all the chemicals in my brain until they're gone. <clears throat> and so that's the, the real mm -hmm. two ways that the, will, the real two ways that I really, and then the disassociative state will kick in sometimes so the PTSD does. And then that's just awesome because I just kind of sit there and just wait. You like it in a way. It, it can be very useful, yeah. It can be very, Interesting. very useful. Yeah. So my thing that I get, it's called like, it's like a brain fog, like de depersonalization, I think it's called. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, um, it's almost like a bad high. I get like brain fogged and I don't feel like myself. I would say that's like level one of that's, what I'm experiencing. Okay, I'd say like I'd, I'd say I'd say that's like the how I spend ninety percent of my time. Jeez, yeah. wow. The worst is like because if if I get that feeling like before I come on this show, I get like super in my head, or like before I have to make a video or I have to work, and I'm like I can't do it because I I feel like I'm not funny. I'm in my head. I feel like I'm just high and I'm like paranoid. Yeah. I'm super sensitive to everything and I just feel like I can't perform i can't be myself and that that to me is the scariest yep. worst part is yep. that i can't be me you know yep. that whew, that shit fucks me up I well hate it so what much. again through therapy uh what i learned to do is uh I, I learned to basically try to not create a persona because that leads people to believe i'm disingenuous mm. uh, and i am genuine to try to figure out who and what i am who i want to be specifically mm -hmm. And then to push through the anxiety and to push through the um, the fog there and and project that person, mm -hmm. right? And so, like, who are you, Steve? Like, really? Because here's the thing: you're not a, a, a body. You're not a, a disassociative mind. Mm -hmm. You're you're not a, a victim. You're a person. You have mm -hmm. personality. You have quirks. You have wants, feelings, desires. Figure out who you are, and then we're going to learn how to project that through the shit. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. That's how what am I out of all the therapy I went through and I must have been through twenty years of it, maybe two years of it was good. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. real that's really frustrating because a lot of people go, I went to therapy and it doesn't work. And it doesn't most of the time. Um, but it's all like little small pebbles, mm -hmm. right? You, you know, therapy isn't a rock. Therapy is a, a bunch of grains of sand. Mm -hmm. Every day, every session, every whatever. And it adds up after a lifetime. Right. You know. For me, that's how it worked anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that 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 was one of the best things in the world. So I tend to the one of the reasons I think I'm so good at performing, and why I'm good at performing the Francis character without taking a break, that ever having a break, is I learned how to reject that personality, mm -hmm. and that kind of is what an actor does, right. and that leads people to think that I'm gen that I'm disingenuous, um, and maybe on some level that is true because if I were genuine, I would be comatose most of the time, just so, not speaking, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, but this is who I want to be. Yeah. So even even tonight when I've gotten nervous, I'm just like, I just got to be me. I yeah. just got to just let mm -hmm. me be me yeah. and just let everything set. It's true. Side. A lot of the fear I have is like the self-aware fear where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to I'm not me right now. Instead of just like being just accepting that you don't feel good mm -hmm. and just being like, OK, well, I don't feel like myself. There's And then like the panic sets in and that freaks me out. Right. right. So just being like, OK, I don't feel good. Don't think about it. Just go with it that kind of solves half the problem, right? I will tell you a secret, actually. Um, so I live stream on Twitch. Yeah. And one of the reasons I wanted to live stream on Twitch was to practice uh, exposure therapy for my anxiety. Mm. Interesting. Because the very first time I went live, I lost my mind with anxiety. Really? I was terrified. Oh my God, there's like 15 people watching and they're judging me right now, my God. <laughs> and it just like wrecked me a little bit. And so uh, I, I would stream on YouTube a little bit, but it was hard for me to find an audience on the YouTube channel for some reason. Uh, and I really wanted the game. And mm -hmm. when I started to move to Twitch, it was when gaming still was not. You had to like, sign up for not MCN. It took like 30% of your income. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I, well, Twitch will let me do it without any problem. They'll pay me to do it mm -hmm. instead of me paying somebody else for the right to play games. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll do that. Um, and so Twitch became this like therapy thing for me. And sometimes I will have a nervous breakdown. I will cry in the bathroom floor for 20 minutes. 
and then get up and walk in and stream. And if you ever watch my stream, the nights that I'm playing Bo Burnham music, uh, it generally is me psyching myself up prior to the show playing Bo Burnham uh, to just get ready to do it. If you hear the Kanye rant, <laughs> it's because I'm psyching myself up to do it. Um, but that's a great attitude. But that's like, that's yeah. super important. Right. Like, I think a lot of people struggle with anxiety and depression. And like, my what I would say to them, and I think there's really only one answer is like you just you can't give into it you yeah. can't just lay in bed right. and just wait to die you have to fucking push yourself out of bed and, and do true. your thing and that's true of literally whatever problem you have right kind like, of I, yeah like i think uh when i think of like um ricky burrow you know ricky from yeah. twitter right oh yeah like ricky could easily be a victim for what's going on mm-hmm. in his yeah. life right yeah. like he could easily just be so, just yeah. sitting in a corner feeling miserable for himself yeah, yeah. right but he's taken what his life has handed him and not only just accepted it yeah. but embraced it yeah. and yeah. turned a negative into a positive yeah. Yeah. and just and, and it's having as far as I can tell having an incredible time doing it yeah, I and agree. I love every second of it he loves every second of it mm-hmm. and I, I think that's somebody who could have very easily been paralyzed by the fear Absolutely. or paralyzed by the things that hold him back <laughs> yeah. um, and I think that's all life is right like I was a shut in for seven years and you know what I got out of that I lost seven years. Yeah, I didn't get anything out of that. Right. I didn't get. I didn't heal. I didn't right. get better. I didn't feel better. Nothing nice happened to me during that period of time. That's amazing. I just played a seven bunch of EverQuest. Years, oh, EverQuest. Yeah. That was my shit. <laughs> Doc. Dude, yeah, we was... need to bond on EverQuest. What server? No wonder you lost what seven server? years of your Did life. You play EverQuest. What server? Fuck. What was it? It was. Uh... No, I played so hard. I lost my entire childhood to EverQuest, dude. <laughs> um, what was the name? It was a PvP team. I want to give a PvP. shout out to the. I want to give a shout out to the Praxis server. I want to give a shout out to Wait, Proxy. Praxis, P R E X U S. Remember, all the servers were named after the gods Valentunk of the game. or some shit. I don't remember. Valenzac, we owned Valenzac. Valenzac, yeah. yep. Valenzac team PvP. Yeah, wow. <laughs> dude, I, I was on that. That's shit. too big of a Me, pussy to play. It play, was great. Uh, play on a pvp server but yeah I, I i dove in everquest and did not come out for seven years oh, wow. I, I had to go from everquest to world of warcraft but then because i mean everquest didn't last for so when did you come years. out of the of the shell was it during the wow age uh in 2005 just this. i realized i had not had sex with another person <laughs> for seven <laughs> years and that was the calling and i had the last girl i'd had sex with um we were together off and on for like six and a half years right. and uh, she was getting married mm. and I'm like you know what uh, I don't know if that's why I've been harboring all of this shit or not but here's the thing I don't want to die alone yeah. and I looked around I'm like how alone am I I have a roommate and we're friends and I've burnt every other friend bridge I had so I'm going to make one of them MySpace accounts I hear so much oh. about. And uh, I put myself out there, and I met a few girls through there. I went on a few first dates, but they go pretty badly, you know, when you're like, hey, so here's the thing. Uh, I don't want to have kids because I'm afraid I might punch them. So that does, <laughs> not a bit of a turn on. Uh, but I, I met a girl out of, like, Memphis, Tennessee, and my brother had a place in Memphis. Uh, he had was raising his family down there. So I packed up one day to stay a weekend with my brother and met the girl. And uh, she's like, do you want to go to downtown Memphis? And I'm like, absolutely not. That sounds like a horrifying experience. We should go. <laughs> and like we rode the duck boat. Mm. And I'm like, I, this is so much better than what I've been doing for the last seven years. This is so much better than just <laughs> wow. sitting there waiting to die. So even though I'm terrified and even though this is f- painful because I did not fit on the duck boats. <laughs> Those are tiny little fucking seats. Um, <laughs> I, I I was just glad I did it, and so that was the beginning yeah. of, of the whole thing. We, wow. we and her dated for a while, and uh, she was my excuse to get out of the house for a while. And I ended up, we ended up breaking up, and uh, I ended up playing Magic the Gathering again. Went back to that game, mm. got me into my local gaming store every Friday night, and then I started judging Magic tournaments. And Magic's and, like the good version of EverQuest. Well, it's get like you it, out of the house, right? Yeah, exactly. You get to interact with people in the world. Gets you spend like a hundred dollars on a single piece of paper. Oh, God. oh yeah, the dream. <laughs> yeah, but well, but you know, I. Uh, uh, I mean, we started going back to Pro Tours and stuff, or Pro Tour qualifiers, and and really like the Grand Prix. And I, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know why I ever stopped doing this. I wish I played Magic. I never learned how to play that game. It's a great game. It it's seems expensive, super fun. and sometimes it has its ups and its downs. I played it now for twenty four or twenty five years since nineteen ninety four. I came in in January of ninety four. Wow. So I played it at probably at least once a week. <laughs> what is it? My life. What is it about the game that you love so much? Is it like? <sighs> 
I, I, super strategic. That's exactly it. It's like, like I don't know, when you build a deck, it's like very personal. The right. deck that you've chosen to build, if you're playing commander, like the commander you choose or the or the, the standard deck that you're playing or whatever. And then there's the social aspect. Every good person I've met, other than like maybe one or two people I met over a game of Magic, mm-hmm. the person who kept me from literally being homeless, the guy who gave me the dorm room to sleep uh, on and, and ended up becoming one of my best friends who mm. lives with me and my wife still to this day. Mm. Um, he, he, I've known him for 20 some years. I met him over a game of magic. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I mean, every, like, we have 20, 25 people come over to my house on Saturday night and they've all been handpicked people, you know, cause sometimes they're plus ones, but mm-hmm. for the most part, they're all been handpicked people that I picked over a game of magic. And I'm like, that should be one of the persons that's, that tries out our little group. Interesting. Nice. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. I want to play magic. <laughs> yeah. It's I've always a, wanted to play And it. the game is really fun too. But I mean, that's when it, somebody will ask me every once in a while, how does an adult make friends? I'm like, do you have a local gaming store in your town? Because if you right. do, show up. Right. And pick mm-hmm. a game, maybe magic. That's probably the most popular in there. Uh, but pick a game and play it with people. You think and, generally magic players are more like, are, are welcoming and warm people? It depends on your community. Our community was always super cool, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that I live in Northwest Arkansas, which is absurdly progressive. Mm-hmm. Like one of my favorite stories about how progressive Northwest Arkansas is, and it's not like in an obnoxious way. It's not like we're talking like people riding on campus kind of way. Right. It's just everybody just kind of, well, okay, so let's talk about progressivism for just a second. Can we do this? Yeah, of course. Okay. So I grew up in the 80s and 90s, right? And so progressive in the <coughs> 80s and 90s was all about tolerance. It was all about tolerating other people, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, there's there's Muslims in your neighborhood. You should probably just be okay with that. Yeah. Just focus on just learning to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. And your your son might be a homosexual. And you just need to learn to focus on being okay with that, okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't have to, like, champion them. You don't have to do anything else. Just just accept that. Right. And also, hey, if you happen to be gay or you happen to be Muslim and you live in an area, area with bigots, you got to tolerate bigots because they're people too. Right. And like that was just the whole kind of premise of how I grew up. Mm-hmm. And so Northwest Arkansas is still kind of just lets people be people, right? And so if you go to like the, the, the drinking strip in my town, mm-hmm. it's a uh, law bar, sports bar, gay bar, uh, uh, sports bar, uh, tr- uh, the, 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 the transsexual bar that has the, the drag shows, mm-hmm. uh, ch- chicken wings. Right. You know? And like everybody just does their thing. Nobody yeah. really cares. Right. And so, like, when we had a uh, uh, pride parade in Fayetteville about a year and a half ago, um, my friend Olivia, who's trans, she marched in it. And my wife got this beautiful picture. She tweeted out on social media. And it's a protester. And the protester's wearing, like, a shirt, like, uh, you know, protesting the whole, the whole gay rights thing. And Olivia says, can I hug you? And he goes, well, of course you can hug me. Why wouldn't I want to give you a hug? I, I just don't want you to go to hell. I'm worried about right. you burning in hell. That, right. like, we don't have any personal problems. Right, right. It's just my book says that you will burn in hell, and I don't want that to happen. To he you. actually care. It's a care. It comes right. from a place of compassion. Right. That's like, weird. We, we don't have a lot. Of, we have like maybe like one hate preacher who shows right. up every once in a while. <laughs> right. But like, it, I don't know. It's a, it's a great area. So, uh, so our magic community has just always been like very. Hey, let's just concentrate on the game. Mm. You're Republican. I'm a Democrat. You're black. I'm white. I'm fat. You're skinny. Who cares? This game's fun. Do you like this game? Sure. You want to have dinner after this? Yeah, let's have dinner. That's cool. cool. That's we'll cool. play some more there. Um, it, it's not always that way, you know. Especially. I have a hard time imagining a Magic: The Gathering community being like a bunch of like dicks. I don't know why. It just it doesn't make like it, well, every once in a while you get the tryhards, right? Yeah, you get they're the guys just super like, serious about the game. He can't handle losing. <laughs> Got it. And like, okay. I can't believe I lost your yeah, shit. Yeah, I can see There's that. There's old men screw. And you get the guy who's just kind of like. I know every once in a while you get that guy who's very about his thing, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I'm very Republican. I'm very Democrat. Yeah. I'm very progressive. I'm very bigoted, yeah. right? And that guy, like, it supersedes the game. Okay, and, gotcha. But then that's just, like, a personal yeah. problem. That has nothing to yeah, do with definitely. the game. Yeah. That's just a guy who's, like, who's really too deep into identity politics. When you, when you come together for magic, like, you do tournaments, like, gatherings? Yeah, like, people. right. Like, our, our local st- store, the one I go to is, like, Gear in Fayetteville, and they do... Uh, uh, they do like two or three events a week. So how many people at an event? It depends. Like it could be as small as eight, and I mm-hmm. think like for their pre-releases, we they'll get like 120. Wow! And it's, it's, it's uncomfortable like at that store, like 100 some people. But interesting. Yeah. And then like if you go to like a Grand Prix, like Grand Prix Las Vegas just took place. Yeah. And I don't want to guess a number here because I don't want to be that off. But we're talking tens of thousands of this is a huge tournament. Like, like yeah, we're talking and massive, like a, massive, massive, massive. Is there an entry sized. fee? Yeah, like a yeah, massive entry How fee. Much, what yeah. is the entry fee? Like for uh, the last Grand Prix I played, and I pay like eighty bucks, and I'm sure it's more expensive these days. Eighty bucks. Wow. Yeah. So what does first place take home on something like that? Tens of thousands. Damn. Yeah. So is there professional Magic the Gathering yeah, players? Absolutely right. Wow. Yeah. 
and there are people, professionals, people stream it professionally. There's people who go on the circuit who also stream it professionally. There's people like, uh, there's one guy who's, who's a trust, well, he ended up putting money into like some sort of stockbroker thing. He invests stocks for other people. And like, so he's rich, but he just likes mm. the game. So he just right. like shows up right. and like takes other people's money and laughs about it. <laughs> you know? Doesn't and, care about it. Yeah. And like, there's, it's just like any other esport. Um, it's, it's a lot of personalities doing the things that they do, and they're they're heroes sometimes, and they're villains other times, mm -hmm. and and everybody bitches about the state of the game, and, and it's fun to just complain about it's it. Interesting. Yeah, and I I, I hate esports, but uh, t Magic's the one I can kind of tolerate. Like I want to hear about the deck he played. I want to hear about him. Right. But I don't want to hear about like what decks went in. Oh, what what card they ban because right. of the pro tour? What right. card spiked? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, um, usually when we have a guest on, we the ask ghost them, stories. Yeah. I know. I want to, we usually we, this is a weird tradition. We always ask yeah. about ghost stories. I have a ghost story. Great. <laughs> I want to take another quick break. I I don't think I think we have to end after that because I have the thing. Oh, afterwards. we have to wrap it up. Okay, we yeah. have to wrap it up. Okay. So let's end on the classic spooks and goofs. This is the most random thing. Me and Eli are super <laughs> skeptical people. We don't really believe in ghosts, but somehow <laughs> everyone we've had on the show has like really fascinating supernatural slash ghost stories. Okay. So we always throw it to the guests. What if, you got so any the, spooks and gifts for us? I feel us? weird about this. You one. also don't have to have a no, story. No, I do. I do. <laughs> and I, okay. So I grew up uh, dabbling in a variety of Christian religions. My mom wanted to expose me to as many as she could. Um, I, Christian religion? Christian religion. So like, like all the different Like uh, Pentecostal and Methodist and, and stuff right, like that. Right. Pentecostal, easily my favorite. Because uh, we went to this Pentecostal church, and it was all about the, the Holy Spirit touching you and coming inside you and talking tongues oh, and yeah. making you Let's dance go. and flop on the floor and stuff. I've seen that <laughs> shit. Fascinating. Dude, when I watch that, I'm like, this doesn't look Christian. This looks demonic. Right. Yeah, this exactly, is like the right. Jesus camp stuff. And so, yeah. like, there's even, like, which I will, I, I, there's even, like, exorcism stuff in mm. my history mm. because my mom was, like, crazy. Mm. And so... But that all to me, I, I, you know, I'm a victim of Munchausen syndrome, so how much of that is bullshit, right? Like, how much of that is just story scheming to, to manipulate me, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But here's something I can t absolutely tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt that happened to me. So my mom passed in 2009, and I always wanted to be the good kid, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the only one that would do anything for her, you know? Even though I got the worst of it, I, I, for whatever reason, I could see the heart out of monsters, and I wanted to be there for her when she died. And so I get a phone call one day, and they're like, you know, your mom is about to pass uh, at the hospital. If you, you, you want to be here, you, you need to come. Hmm. And I pack up my, all my shit, and I go there, and uh, I, I, I sit next to her, and I hold her hand as she dies. And, you know, they give her morphine to help her go. I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize that. Uh, but they, 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 they'll they give you morphine uh, in a lethal dose when they know you're going to die anyway. A lethal dose? Really? Right, they'll give you a lethal amount of morphine to Are you serious? You yeah, that's something that's very common. Wow. Le I didn't know yeah. lethal. Right. Well, enough to where... It's I mean, really going to help. Basically, wow. you're not—you're right. almost not even conscious at that point. Like, right, right. You're right. not there. Right. So, like in the case of my mother, all of her organs had shut down. She had three infections in her that were not re reacting to antibiotics. She's absolutely going to die, and her heart is failing right now. So let's give her enough morphine to where, when she dies tonight, she will die completely out of pain. She'll be completely unaware completely comfortable interesting and she's already in a medically comatose state at that point anyway right so uh held her hand as she died and i'll tell you i didn't know what to expect but here's what happened nothing just nothing hmm. she was alive one second and she wasn't the next mm -hmm. and her body didn't change or transform in any magic way there was no light there was no poof there was no wind hmm. nothing the machines showed that her heart was beating one second, and they showed they were flatlined the next. That was it. Mm. And uh, the nurses unhooked her, and I sat with her, and I sat with her, and I sat with her, and I, again, just kind of calm with us. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, you know? And they said, you can take as much time as you want. I'm like, okay, I don't know how much time I want. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But eventually my friend Chad, the guy who I told you helped me keep from being homeless, lives with us now, he came, he was in the room, and he's like, S -S Steve, we should go. We've got to make arrangements. And I'm like, Okay. And, uh, you know, we left and did everything that had to be done. And I came home, and I was playing World of Warcraft. I decided the way I was going to cope with her death was to throw myself back into that game, make a few friends, and just play that game like a drug until the pain stopped. Mm. And so that's what I was doing. And I always spent Christmas with my mom every year. 
And this is the very first Christmas I would ever spend alone. <coughs> now with my wife, the last Christmas I'll ever spend alone. I'm pretty happy about that. But uh, in fact, in retrospect, it's the only Christmas I ever spent alone. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and I'm sitting there playing World of Warcraft, shirtless. Uh, I was so broke at the time. I, I didn't have an office chair. I had a stupid broken cooler I'd flipped upside down. Wow. And so I'm sitting there on this Jesus. broken down desk, this broken down chair, on this old alien computer. And I feel a hand touch my right shoulder. Jump. And I realize it felt exactly the way my mom's hand felt when I was holding her. Hmm. Wow. Now, me and my mom had this arrangement, and I have it all, with all my friends, I have it with my wife and everybody else. If there is an afterlife, you need to tell me. <laughs> if there is any way you can communicate to me that there is an afterlife, you need to come and let me know so that I can stop being a fucking nihilist and get my shit together. Mm -hmm. Okay? If it's Christianity, let me know. If it's Muslim, I need to fucking know. Whichever one it is, <laughs> show up and tell me so I can start doing that. Okay? <laughs> so that's the deal. Um, so I, I stand up and I look around the room and I go, Mom? Nothing. Mom? Nothing. So I sat back down and I type in the chat. I'm like, you're never going to believe what happened. And I felt the hand on my right shoulder again. That's weird. Mm -hmm. So I knew not to turn around. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> I knew not to turn around because I know she's not going to be there anyway. Mm. And I know on some level that that's psychosomatic. I know on some level that's just me processing grief. Where was it? Like here? Yeah, right here on the right shoulder. Got it. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I know on some level it's psychosomatic. I know on some level it's just me, my brain processing the pain and figuring out a way to deal with it. And, you know, but I, at the same time, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, do I know that? Like, do I know that's what it was? Well, you asked, you have this deal with your mom. Do you think that she was fulfilling it? I don't know. <laughs> I honestly, I... I honestly don't know what that means. I wish I did. I wish there was a moral to that story. Right. I wish I could say I figured it out. It turns out we all have to eat spaghetti every Thursday, and that's how we get into heaven. I don't, right. you know, but I, 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 no, I still to this day, I don't know what it meant. I don't know what it was. That's wild. I, you know, I, I, I have spoken to one therapist about it, and that therapist has said, it was, you're probably right. It probably was psychosomatic. You yeah. probably imagined the scenario. You know, were you sleep deprived during that period of time? Like, well, I wasn't sleeping at all for like weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's probably part of it. It's just the grief process that strikes yeah. us all yeah. every possible way. But who knows? Yeah. Well, it's really interesting. A lot of the, yeah, that was, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the ghost stories are like just, you know, there's no answer, but it's yeah, just. Yeah, there's no answer. You can think of reasons. Usually it's or like. Or not. Yeah. I've I've felt that before where it feels like someone touched my shoulder. Yeah. And I and I don't know how to explain it. It feels like a spa maybe a spasm or something. Like right. maybe there's actually something in your what, body that feels like you're being touched. What specifically struck me was her hand was cold as she died. Uh, and mm -hmm. so it was very cold when you touched felt me. a mm -hmm. temperature I felt sensation. I felt a temperature sensation. That's it wild. was right. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. wild. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Ooh. That's now I'm crazy. Out. That's a I'm crazy. Out. That's a good ghost story. Dude. So yeah. good luck sleeping, everybody. God tonight. bless. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you what. Thanks for joining us, dude. Yeah. Oh, Thank yeah. you for that ghost story. That was a legendary one. Yeah. That was a real spook. That might be the top. <laughs> that one. might be the top spookiest ghost story we've had. Wow. Okay. Yay. I have to go find a compilation of the rest of them. <laughs> Somebody make Just that tweet it to me tonight. Okay. It'll definitely come around. Anyway, I really appreciate you making the trip out here. It's no, been man, a real honor me. to have you no in here. Idea. It was awesome. As soon dude. as you started announcing a podcast, I'm like, I'm going to be on that one day. Dog. That's a bucket list <laughs> item right now. And I can't believe we scratched it off. Yeah, we awesome. yeah. I and really can appreciate it. Thanks, come man. over again. Do you guys ever? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Do you guys do anything at VidCon? Why do you guys not? Are dude, you, I don't know. Do I, I get the feeling. We're not going. Is but it? we've never been invited. We've never been included in any way. Yeah. I don't know how it works. Do you get invited or do you... Well, I think like, so if you're with an MCN, I think sometimes your MCN will pitch your name and if they're mm -hmm. interested, then whatever. I just wrote the company like four years ago. I'm like, hey, I've always wanted to go to VidCon. I think it's super cool. Yeah. And are you guys uh, interested in me? Here's what I do. Right. And they're like, sure. And so here's the thing. Like, I, I think a lot of people think that. Like everybody I've ever talked to, like, why don't you try to go to VidCon on some level? Uh, and they're like, oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't think they want me as a feature creator or whatever. You would have been so perfect for the copyright panel I did last year mm. that I dropped your name several times during it, mm. talking about your situation, talking about your suit, talking about FUPA, talking about the whole nine yards. And all, all I could think that whole time was if, if... I didn't even know that was a thing. You know? yeah. Yeah. I, I don't... Nah. It's, it's, we've never really done... The first con we did was E3, and it was... Um, was that this year? 
Yeah, it was the, the Reese it? one. We didn't make it inside, actually. <laughs> we got there kind of late, and, like, um, we got there late. We had, like, an hour there, but we we getting stopped so many times. Mm-hmm. It's, like, a perfect overlap, I think, of our fans. Yeah. But we were getting stopped so much that um, it was we like walking it into a fan meetup. Or yeah, something. pretty much. It was, it was more intense than I thought. Isn't it the best feeling in the world? I it's, swear it. That's my favorite. It's like, amazing. It was really, it's really flattering, but on the other end, like, when, like, it got to the point where, there was like a full circle around us and people yeah. kept lining up. Do we have enough time for one more And story? I was like, I'm yeah, fucking, sure. I'm trapped. I have such a good story. I had no escape plan. <laughs> okay, so last year, it's, I am at VidCon. Yeah. And uh, the first year I went to VidCon, it was pretty cool, like one out of five people recognized me and one in 50 people sometimes. I could just go on the floor and like I'd take one selfie and that mm-hmm. would be it. Yeah. And the next year, a lot worse. The third, the third year, the third time I was there was last year, and I could not go into mm-hmm. a pu- public area. Right. <laughs> and if I did, I would literally get that wall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, uh, security was mad at me because mm. this was right after the Christina Grimmie mm. shooting. And, yeah. and they're like super hyper aware and they, they can't control that situation. So like, you're, sir, you know you're not supposed to be near the public. I'm like, but it's the whole reason I'm here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, um, but, you know, I mean, I didn't want to get uninvited, so I eventually started backing off. And if I did have to go through a public area, I'd be like, I'm, I'm sorry, we can't talk, we can't talk. You know, I'm sorry, sorry, you know, I apologize. Do stuff like this as I'm walking. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or, or my little stupid Mark card thing. Um, so we, uh, uh, <laughs> David, I lost my train of thought. So I'm, I, they do this little, they do this little um, meet and greet on the convention floor. So we can connect with brands and brands can connect with us because we weren't able to do that for the rest of the show. Right. And so I go back to the bar and you never believe who's there. Um, Mark Plyer, Jack Septic Eye, mm-hmm. John Tron, mm-hmm. all sitting there drinking. And I'm like, oh my God, this is three people right off the list. I can't wait <laughs> to talk to all these guys. And we hang out for a little while. We talk. Uh, I was shocked to hear, you know, Mark said some of the nicest things to me. Um, so we end up. Uh, we we, uh, we end up uh, going to the concert that night. Gregory Brothers is playing. Mm. Hank Green's band is playing. My wife's favorite part is the concert. She's like watching her clock. Oh, we need to go. We need to go. Mm. And I'm like, hey, guys, we're going to split. We're going to watch the concert. Do you, you know, if you, anybody want to come. Oh, I'd love to. Everybody's super excited. So here's the thing. I'm used to my level of recognition. I'm not used to Jack Septic. Oh, Jack and Mark at VidCon? I can't even right. imagine. Wow, That's yeah. like Beatles mania. Yeah. So they're like, shh, well, show us the way. <laughs> so I show them the way, and it's all back a house until we get right to the concert. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that there's like a place for us to watch the concert. Me and my wife have always just watched it from the audience in the back. Right. So I lead them right into the center of the damn thing. Right. And Mark oh is smart enough to nope out. And John is... He's like, peace at this shit. John is like, I don't know what happened to John because he was drinking a lot. I don't know if I saw him I've heard stories there. from him at that <laughs> con. Apparently it was weird and wild. But, but we... Uh, uh, but Jack follows me in there. Yeah. And so Jack literally... Beatlemania. There are girls putting flowers in his hair. There Gosh. are girls handing him stuffed animals. I, I don't it's even a, think they brought them for Mark. It's all girls. It's all girls Whoa. for Jack. Wow. I don't even think they brought the stuff for Jack. I think they're literally just taking things they own and giving it to him. <laughs> I've heard, Here's my credit card. Dude, oh I, the one God. thing I consistently hear about VidCon is that it's like super creepy. It can be. Because it's just a bunch of little Wait, underage that's, that's kids. That's how it used to be. Fetishizing. Right, mm-hmm. that's how they're, you know yeah. that used to be all it was like the fourth year, like four years ago. Yeah. Uh, now it's a pretty much like a lot of the younger brothers and sisters of those girls have grown up, mm-hmm. and so now there's a huge gamer audience and there's mm-hmm. a huge. It's very diverse now, mm-hmm. but at yeah. four years ago, absolutely. But every girl that was at that concert found Jack, that's and weird. so I look over at him at one point, and he looks at me like this, <laughs> like what the fuck have you done to me? I'm going to get shot, right? And he's so sweet that he's still signing away and he's, he's taking gifts and he's like, oh, thank you. Oh, and he's, people are trying to kiss him and they're trying to touch him. Oh, and I'm God. like, what have I done to him? So I walk over to the security guy and I grab him by the shirt. And I said, dude, where's the green room? And he goes, hey, Boog, uh, I don't know if you're allowed in the green room or not. I, 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 I could find out, though. And I'm like, not for me. Him. Mm-hmm. And I point to Jack, and Jack looks at the security guy like, I'm fucking drowning. Yeah. So, There's no escape. Yeah, right. There's, he's scary. just stuck there. Yeah. So he then goes, grabs the two biggest security guards he can find, 
and then they literally just save Jack. That's mm-hmm. they just like part the ways. He's got to go. Everybody's. He's got to go. I'm sorry. He's sorry to go. And, yeah. it, it, and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing it. And oh, you, well, need, you can't find me lucky You terms. need. To... <laughs> right. And so he. I'm sure that's what he said. Right? He t- we get him to the back, and this is why I like telling the story. Yeah. Um, we get him to the back, and I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was going to be like that for you. I, we normally just watch it. But he goes, he goes, oh, it's not a big deal, but he's just, I, 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 I can't sign all those people. I can't hug all those people. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I'm sorry to put you in that situation. He goes, well, it's not a big deal. It's just, it's just, just too damn many of them. I wish I could meet every girl here, but I just can't do it. And like, I thought it was so sweet that what he, he wasn't mad at me. Yeah. He's just frustrated. He's frustrated that he literally yeah. can't hug well, that yeah. many people. That's yeah. the situation. How sweet is that? It's great, yeah. yeah. But it, you're you are confronted by this. Mm-hmm. It's way too much, yeah. and you want to say hi to everyone. You want to take a selfie, but it's like you can't. You have to. You can't sit there all day. And right. the best part is you need you need someone too to like have your back and be like, that's, hey, it's time to go. And that's why you I, don't want to be the guy that's like, see, right. I have to go now. You know. And uh, so I, I it, it is overwhelming now, and that's yeah. why like Bernie asked me if I wanted to come to RTX, Rooster Teeth, and I'm like. I don't think I can, dude, because I think I'm going to get swamped. They don't really have, like, a. I was asked if he has, like, a lot of back-of-house stuff, and he's like, no, not really. We're just going to wade through it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know that I could do that with my social anxiety and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, But what I try to think of something Markiplier said whenever I'm meeting fans. Uh, he said, you know, if I meet somebody at VidCon, it's probably the thousandth person I, I met at VidCon. Mm-hmm. And it's not important to me, and it's not that memorable to me. But that person might have bought a ticket just to meet me, that person is meeting me for the first and maybe only time, so I have to get it right. Yeah. And so that's what I try to think. This isn't about me. I put myself yeah, in a position sure. where it's not yeah. about me anymore. It's about this person. So I'm going to ask them their name. I'm going to talk to them. I'm yeah. going to get to know something about them. I'm, I'm going to try to remember them if I see them later at the convention. And it's overwhelming. It's just so overwhelming. But it's just, again, I have to sleep at night. <laughs> you know, and I got to know I did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But yeah, I, I can imagine. I can't imagine being your level of fame and then trying not well, you even get into the building. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't quite make. I think it would have been even worse in the building. I mean, we. I think we need to wear a disguise or something if we do that again. The cosplay, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cosplay. Yeah. Yeah. Do a little Spider-Man Elsa. <laughs> we'll that right would get in. us oh, more yeah. attention. I feel like. <laughs> All right, let's wrap. We got to. We got to. Ela's got some oh, yeah. some appointment to go yeah. to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So thank you, man. It was hey, a joy. It was me. an honor. It was a privilege. A lot of fun. Again, if you guys want to check me out, youtube.com slash boogie298. Yeah. Uh, you might like where Francis sketches. It's in the will. same vein, kind of, mm-hmm. of your yes. comedy. Uh, and you might also like what I do on Twitch because it is way stranger than what you do. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that it gets real fucked up. Go to Twitch. Really? Check yeah. out his Twitch. I'm going to be watching shit. Yeah. You're selling it. Yeah. It's, I'm it's, fascinated. I don't know. It's like it, just get ready to pucker your butthole the entire stream. I'm puckering. It is pure cringe. Oh, wow. And I love it. I love every second of it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this little impromptu episode. Appreciate you guys coming on board and joining us here with Boogie. We will be back on Friday at our usual time with yeah. Steve-O. Spicy hot, spicy hot. <laughs> um, we don't have a sponsor this episode, so the best way to support us, guys, Twitch Prime. Is that it? Did I say it right this time? Yeah. Twitch Prime, guys. <laughs> if you connect your Amazon Prime with your Twitch account, you can give us free money every month, a free subscription. Did you know that? I do. This is amazing. I love it. And That's I will amazing. tell you, uh, that is where the majority of my Twitch income comes yeah. from. By far ours. It's so good. Yeah. Guys, it's a so free way to support us. Connect your Amazon account, which everybody has, Amazon Prime. Right, exactly. Free money every month. Thank yep. you. God bless you guys so much. And if you guys go to represent.com forward slash h 2 h 3 you have two days left to buy this sick merch that Eel is wearing. Why is everyone saying scrapbook? In the oh, is that something my mom... Because my mom said something about she wants everyone to sign the scrapbook. Is that what it uh, is? These guys are ride or die. <laughs> Shit. These guys are so ride or die. My mom made this this scrapbook. And she right. she we'll was asking me to have it. everyone we'll sign the scrapbook. Let's get the scrapbook. But I love that they all remember the scrapbook. Everyone, like the whole well, let's, let's hear it. I'm going to grab the scrapbook. Let's, okay. let's okay. immortalize this. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that's my mom gonna <laughs> love that. I feel yeah. like I barely got to talk to you. I'm sorry, I, I, my mouth yeah, just goes like this. No, the, <laughs> and my mouth goes like this. <laughs> it doesn't say anything. <laughs> uh, I, uh, no, when, but it's, I, I've it's always fun. been the guy who talks and I gets nervous. So. I don't really know what my mouth is. Yeah, me that's, to do with this I, know, I met people like that and it's so funny to me. I'm like the, exactly the opposite. Why does she want this sign? I don't get it. Cause there's... I think she said there's empty pages. Oh my God, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> the ones at, at the this. end. Look at the resolution on this. <laughs> That's 
so bad. I love it. Yeah, it's great. I love I it. Wanted, I wanted it's so exactly the way. I wouldn't want it to be any other way. That's so good. She actually went to Staples and somebody printed that. <laughs> Is that amazing? Is I want to be that guy <laughs> whose job is we <laughs> this is this bad PewDiePie? Like, yeah. Oh my god. She's going to do uh, one for you now. Oh yeah, you're going to be pixelized by my mom now. Look at that. Insane. Look at the resolution on that. You know, if, honestly, if you do that to me, I'm just going to look normal. Yeah. I'm not going to look thin. I'm just going to look super normal. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> All right, here, let's see. What have you done, mom? Here you go. Okay, here. I, it's, oh, Yay. So this is for the stream. For you to for sign mom. it. Yeah. There you go. Yay. Nice. You got your wish. <laughs> there it Look is. at this. It looks like an looks like an eight year old wrote it. If you ever get my signature, if you ever want to fake my signature, just you have a stroke there. and then do it with your off hand. That's, that's those are the best signatures. Like. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Love the shadow on that too, by the way. <laughs> that's so that's good. Oh, it's just mad. <laughs> Alright guys. <laughs> it's been a laugh. It's been a gaff. It's, there's been some spooks, some goofs, lots of spooks, incidentally, <laughs> tons of spooks. Oh yeah. So we'll got. We'll see you guys on Friday. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Papa thanks, bless. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks Bye. everyone. Cut it.